Welcome guys to Hellstone Wargaming and welcome back to the London Grand Tournament in London. London. Oops, oh. I broke my mic. <laughs> what a great start to the day. Hello everyone, welcome. How are you? I'm Mikey, joined uh, by Elliot. Uh, uh, I'm Elliot. Hi, how are you Elliot? Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm have, okay. You, have you had a good weekend so far? I've had a good weekend. Yeah. Good sleep, good I'm shower. Had a nice shower, been in a cool hotel. London's what it is. We had a KFC, had a great time. I took a drunk Nick Nanavati to KFC last night, which was great. Yeah, that was good. really fun. You got lots of so, free free tips. You did, yeah. So. None of them were about Warhammer, but <laughs> no, they were about, mainly about chicken. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> so uh, we are we were live yesterday. We did the Invitational Grand Tournament. We did round one to four. Uh, today we have four more games to stream. We do. We do have four more games. This is going to be round one of the main London 40k Grand Tournament, and we have games one to three, and then also we're going to have the Invitational Final. The final. Very spicy. Very spicy at 8 p.m. BST. We um, uh, <laughs> we are going to be live all day. Um, we've just come live. We've been setting up all morning. So if there's any technical issues, then do speak up now. Now is the time. Do, is there any technic technical issues from you, Elliot? No. Okay. Sorry, I'm just getting an update. It's okay. Shaky Tom says the most important question: Who's the most hungover from Elsom? I don't think any of us are hungover. I think we're all just very tired. Because it's been a very long day. So it sounds like we're good. Hi, Dave Murray, Shaky Tom, Guard Daddy, Dinosis, um, and Confurio. So, how are you doing? So, we've got two tables being covered today. There is 400 players, I think, maybe, in BCP at the minute. Something ridiculous so like a that. A lot of players here. Hell of a lot of players. We have two tables to be covered. On table one, we have Jordan with Eldar Flyers, and the one and only Boris Michev with Orcs, the owner of Badman Cafe. It's thanks to Badman Cafe that we are actually being able to run this stream as we are, because they helped out buy all the gear, which is super cool of them. So we've got Boris and Jordan on table one. And table two, Elliot? Table two, we have Lewis and Tom. Lewis and Tom. Yeah, so, so Lewis is, I'm going to get this right, because I can't I'm waiting this for up. it, I'm waiting for it. Lewis is running his Orc Stodies, and um, <laughs> Tom's going to use his Cust Orcs, and I can't get it wrong if I say that. <laughs> I can't get it so, wrong. So Tom is from Team MMX, which is a, a, a big team in Hull. Yep. Uh, he's using Orcs. Uh, he's been using them for a long time. He just he came from Necrons when he, he was using three Tesseract Volts. Oh. And that's why he used the R. Oh, a remember. duck has been taken off the table. Ah, uh, get the duck back on. Oh, that duck's moving. So shall we go and look some ducks? Let's go and have a duck. <laughs> Let's get the same one. That was the technical issue. Double the orcs is double the fun. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, there's a massive technical issue in that only half the screen is devoted to Elliot. So, <laughs> do you want to get the Twitch chat put on there? Um, so, this is table one. Uh, I said it's Jordan versus Boris. Um, so, Jordan is using Eldar Flyers versus Smasher Guns and loads and loads of orcs, basically. Basically, that's what's happening. Um, so, we're going to go through the lists and see what ha what's happening. So, uh, shall I go through Boris's list first? Yeah. Is that okay with you? Yeah, of course. Just got to, um, I'm on BCP, so just waiting for it to load. Um, I'm going to have to go to Roaster, apologise. Sweet Jesus, all those flyers. Yes, indeed, there's a lot of flyers at the LGT. I think there's more flyers than, than players in total. Twice. Twice over. Um, also, seems to be a lot of beards. If people start talking craft beards, I'll do my nut. <laughs> there is a lot of beards, yeah, especially in Team Hellstone. So, um, see the thing about uh, IPAs is that you not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Boris owns Bad Moon Cafe and he's also using pure Bad Moon Orcs. You can't ask for more thematic. Legend. <laughs> so he's got uh, one, two, three battalions. Uh, so he has a war boss um, and a weird boy. He has three units of Orcs, uh, all with sluggers. Um, well, two units with sluggers, one unit with shooters. Then he has a pain boy and 15 looters. Loot is bad, hashtag. Uh, two, and then he has two weird boys and 30 Gretchen. And then the third battalion is the Dreadwar. The Dreadwar. Dread so that's a specialist attachment, attachment. The specialist attachment, yeah. So he's got a big mech. Oh, and he's got a custom force field. Never seen one of those before. Mm -hmm. Gives everyone within 12 or 6 a uh, 5 plus in one. Right, really good. Okay. And then he's got a big mech with shock attack gun. Yep. What's special about this big mech with shock attack gun, Elliot? So his relic is actually going to take the souped up shock attack gun. Yeah. So that replaces his normal one. Yeah. So basically that's like a shock attack gun, but twice as good. Yeah. It shoots 2d6 rather than 1d6. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, and then he's Also, got... while we're talking about the big mech. Yeah. Um, I believe it's his warlord. 
I've got no no shaking heads to c confirm that. So he's taken the Warlord trait, big killer boss, which gives him an extra wound. Yeah, so the big metal shock attack gun has an extra wound, does he? Or is it someone else who has Oh, no, he's... So plus one wound. to wound. Right, okay. Plus one to wound. Oh, wow, okay. So souped up shock attack gun, that she's CD6. There's two turn. ways on a piece of paper you can read a plus, a one, and a W. Yeah. <laughs> he gets plus one. Okay, cool. So he has a souped up shock attack gun that shoots 2d6, that can shoot twice a turn, that has plus one to wound. You can't complain. You can't complain can't, at all. Can't complain and then he's got all. 30 Gretchen, six smasher gun. Uh, uh, sorry, four smasher guns, two tractor cannons, four smasher guns, two tractor cannons, and that's it. Big killer boss is better than I thought it was. Yeah, I was like, plus, plus one, wound, one to rubbish. wound is really nice. <laughs> more looters, uh, more like looters, bad moon. <laughs> I used to live down Lee Valley Way. Is this where the old ice rink was? Uh, I'll be honest, I have no idea, but it's the Lee Valley Athletic Centre. So that was um, Boris's list. Let's go to uh, Jordan's list. I'll quickly go through that. It's it's flyers. <laughs> it's a bit, it's an LA top battalion. We have a Farseer Skyrunner, a Warlock Skyrunner, an Autark uh, with a Banshee Mask, um, with Me Fate's Messenger and Falchu's Wing, so he moves super fast. Then he has two Nids of Rangers and eight Storm Guardians, eight Wind Riders, a Wave Serpent. Then he has an Air Wing Detachment of Exarch, 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 Hunter, Hunter. You like Hunter, Hunter, don't you? anime hunter hunter yeah so crimson hunter x out times three not two normal crimson hunters and then he has a razor wing jet fighter razor wing jet fighter razor wing jet fighter which are black heart from the Drakari, which means he has access to vet i'm too bad oh i can just hear you through the headset uh, okay um so you want to meet me on there on here so on discord so one technical issue oh i thought i was hellstorm am i hellstorm down yeah you're hellstorm down uh... oh i am muted yeah. I wonder why I can still hear you. He's definitely coming through this air because when Toby was trying to tell me something a minute ago, I couldn't hear him over you. You couldn't hear me over me? Can I you hear me like hear this? You, were you both talking at the exact same yeah. volume? So. Well, just be a second, guys.
And we are back in the room. We're back. Can Elliot, is that okay? That is perfect, that okay? yeah. So, so basically... What, what, Screw Discord. So what's, what's happening is I, I have a headphone in because I'm a listener, so I'm listening to what's going on on the tables, but I could hear myself and Mikey. So while I'm trying to listen to the headphone that should have nothing in, yeah. bar Toby and Dan, who were feeding us information live from the tables, I was actually just hearing myself and Mikey talking as well. So it's like trying to pick, pick out tactical plays... Whilst also from listening. four voices that are going yeah. on at one time. And one time. of them's happening twice. Which when you're bad at Warhammer anyway, because <laughs> you didn't graduate Warhammer school, because it was just a big lie, it's, it's quite tough. So sorry sorry about that, everybody. But we are back. We are right, back so. in the room. So yeah, this is a side view. We have two tables to cover. We've gone through two of the lists already. Yep. So shall we cut over to table two? We can. I've got a few things I can tell you about. About uh, table two. Table two. Okay, let's cut over now. So, yeah, this so is I table can two. tell you that uh, Thomas has gone first. Yeah, so Tommy's on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, so Tom. Yeah, so Tom's the orc player. Yeah, he is the orc player, Elliot. Well done, thank you. <laughs> done it, smashed it. We had an issue right, this morning. So <laughs> his warlord is the Big Mac. He's yeah. got the um, opportunist. Opportunist warlord uh, trait, I believe. On the Big Mac. And his relic is the super shocker attack gun mega thingy. Super top which, shocker which attack gun. Which are his actual again. words? Yeah. Um, if we can get confirmation what the opportunist does. And then, uh, and also, the yeah. So he's using the dread wire as well from the, from the to vigilus. Get the soup shock attack gun, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, soup soup shock shock attack thing. Tom called it that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the warlord trait, please. So we'll get information about the warlord trait. So on the side view is that one as well. Uh, w while we're waiting for that, we can tell you that he had 17 CP. Yep. And he's got and has gone first, as we can see, he's in his movement phase now. Sure. So this is uh, this is deployment. That's Tom's head. Tom's got a very nice Perfect. back. Very got a nice fade in the hair. The hair today it looks very nice. So I can tell you now that the opportunist. So it allows him to snipe characters up to eighteen inches, and wow. also um, it rerolls ones against vehicles. Cheeky. Okay, so two ways to play it: plus one to wound and sniping characters and rerolling against vehicles. That's super cool. So I'll quickly go over Tom's list. I imagine it's going to be very similar to Boris's. Uh, all of the lists today can be found on BCP. So we, we won't be updating the, the bottom today. So Tom has a, a total of um, 17 command points to start. He has a battalion to begin with that is Bad Moons. It's, it's two units of Weird Boys, three units of Gretchen and Looters, which is a very obviously a typical choice. And then he has Death Skulls uh, battalion. So Death Skulls allows you to reroll one hit one wound and one damage roll and it also gives the entire army a six plus invulnerable uh, so he has a big mech uh, with a force field big mech with shock attack gun um, obviously this is going to be the dread war and he's got another shock attack gun so he's got a super shock and a normal shock so one's like if you touch it a little bit of static and then the other one finger in the mains yeah super, super shock <laughs> <laughs> so super shocks i can't tell we'll, we'll get to their shooting in a second but at the start of the game uh, yep. lewis has spent two command points to use a spicy custodian strategy which allows him a free reroll every round yeah so victor every of the blood games victor of the blood games so yes, basically indeed. this guy is really good at pretending to be an assassin yes and pretending to execute the emperor exactly um so obviously we've seen the movement phase happen uh, yeah. He did spend three command points to get his force field projector off, which gives him an invuln within an 18-inch bubble. Yeah, so it um, basically blows up the size of the big mech. Um, it increases the aura. Yeah, doubles yeah. the range. Um, he's then moved into the psychic phase. He got the jump, da jump off on the looters. Da jump. Yep. Do we know where they've gone? Shall we look at the top down? Dan's going to point out where the looters are now. He's with his finger. Point out on stream for us. Are you ready? There they are. So the looter jumped out from, from, the, from in the corner, so nice and out in the open. So where they can shoot stuff. So so I'll just quickly finish off his list. He's got 30 Gretchen after that. Um, and then he's got 10 Smasher Guns in total. And then he's got a third battalion that is Evil Sun, so plus movement. And that's where his war bosses are. And then he's 30 boys. Uh, 90 boys, sorry. So Bad Moons gives you... Uh, Evil Suns gives you plus one to move, advance, and charge roll. So really, really good. So Boris has gone for a pure Bad Moons, which is really good for shooting. But um, Tom has taken a mixture of Orcs and put all the relevant units in where they need to be. So the, bad, the shooty guys are the Bad Moon, so they reroll one so he yep. can shoot twice. He's got the Death Skulls where the big guns are so he can reroll a hit and a wound every turn. Course, yeah. And a damage roll. And then he's got, I've got my, all my boys that need to move faster, so they'll be Evil Sons. They're fast boys. So, nice fingering, love it. Need a Monty Python graphic hand overlay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try and get one of those one day. That'd be really handy, actually. 
So today we are using ITC Battle to track the score. We, we did have a few issues with it yesterday, so I bought, I think, I'm going to say it softly, say it softly and ca carry a big gun. I think we're gonna, we've sorted all the issues uh, ever so slightly. I'm just going to drop these player names down. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to keep up with all the scores live from the table because Danny, well, actually, you can see there's an iPad on the left-hand side where Tom's rolling some dice. They're going to do all the scores, keep all track of the CP, and then it'll update on, on screen for you live. That's it. Because we look after you here at Hellstar More Gaming. Yeah. Now, I would like to go through, with, there's quite a bit happened on table two okay. uh, that we haven't talked about. So continuing on with the psychic phase, uh, to get the jump off, the psychic did take two mortal wounds. Oof! Perils, because mm. obviously they get plus one to cast with all ten boys around them. He's surrounded by 90, so mm. there you go. I believe he got um, Warpath off on is it the unit of boys in the middle of the board. Perfect. Um, he then spent two command so this is moving into the psychic phase now okay so we spent two command points mm -hmm. on the super shock attack Good. gun to shoot twice to shoot twice yeah, yeah. because the dreadwar detachment gives you a strategy and lets you shoot twice yeah. i believe he's killed two bikes in total with them what a boy so good two vertus praetors dead yeah um and he spent two command points as well for daka daka on the Lutus. daka daka what that does is is it may it because loot uh, because loot orcs normally hit on fives and then they get extra shots on a six but daka 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 or more daka lets them hit on fives and get extra shots on a five rather than a six so it improves that and what you can do because they're bad wounds as well you can force them to shoot twice this turn as well for two right. more cp so loads of cp but he's got two of his best shooting units shooting twice and the looters have done their job because they have finished off that versus praetor unit ouch okay that is really good so that should be updating live now should be should be hopefully cool so lots going on on table two yeah um if we could get an update from table one if there's anything going on it looks like there's just a lot of movement yeah, no, we're getting, a, we're getting a nod from the table. It's just movement at the moment. There you go. So Tom has kill one and hold one so far. Yeah. So Bo Boris is... Uh, and Recon and Reaper and Butcher's he's... Bill. Um, I'll, shall we just go over it's that just list? Advanced, should... Just advancing everything up the board. So Tom's just moving. So we're yeah, going into the Custodes turn from Lewis. So what I'll do is I'll just say he's using pure Custodes. And ironically enough, he's from the team Bedford Weird Boys. Maybe he's <laughs> using the wrong army. <laughs> so it's going to be super quick because he's a Custodes. He's got a shield captain uh, with a Castellan Axe. Then he's got uh, two Colladius Grav Tanks and the Telemon Heavy Dreadnought. Uh, the Dreadnought has two Storm Cannons and the Grav Tank has the Twin Iliastus Accelerator Cannon, which are now Strength 7 since the FAQ rather than Strength 8. Uh, then he has a Shield Captain on Bike, uh, three units of three versus Praetors, and then he has a Rusty 17. So it's not pure Custodes. No. He's got a Rusty 17 there, Elliot. I do like it. Unless they're gold. Rusty 17. Yeah, so an Admech Group Battalion to give him CP. Hmm. It's a description, not a team name. <laughs> <laughs> Love watching UK streams. Time zone kind of works for me a bit. Have dinner, put the little one to bed, chill out with K's on the big TV in AU. Well, appreciate it, man. Diff down under. How are you doing? I appreciate we didn't call out. So thank you very much for the follow when you did. Uh, it's 2 a.m. I really want to watch this. Uh, we only be live for the next uh, 12 and a half hours. So around about there, something like that. We were live until 11 p.m. local time. So, 12 and a half hours to go. So. There's looks of terror going around the team. <laughs> <laughs> so, go and have a nap and then come back and watch us. Terror's battle so. of an A. Yeah. <laughs> Big up the throne world. Big up the throne world. We are in London on terror. This is the London Grand Tournament. This is round one. So, we have three games today and then we have the Invitational Final this evening. Four ga yeah, three games and then the Invitational Final. Thanks, Elliot. Appreciate it. <laughs> Shall we cut to table one and see what's happening? I believe it's a movement phase. Eat box all. Team box. Thank you very much for the follow. <laughs> so, what I can tell you, what I can tell you about this game is that Boris did go first. Sure. So, similar. Uh, the deployment was basically exactly the same. Boris at the moment is advancing his stuff up. Uh, again, he started with 17 CP, the same as, uh, look, uh, sorry. Tom. Tom. Nearly said Lewis. It's like the I same game, say. but how two different armies react to that game. Yeah. Which is interesting. It makes it interesting. What I didn't tell you before is that uh, Jordan has got 10 CP at the start of this game. Obviously, he's going second. Uh -huh. Now, he's got Fate's Messenger. Yep, so he gets to be able to regain command points. Yeah. Uh, and his Warlord is the... Autark. Autark. Yeah. And he's got Fauci's Wing, so he can move really fast. Should per Perhaps should be clear that uh, it's not the UK Prime Minister playing Orcs. No, Fate's Boris, Messenger not give Boris is wound. who's playing. He owns Bad Moon Cafe. He's not the Prime Minister of the UK. I mean, it's, the Prime Minister's probably not doing much right now, you know, considering all things political, but there you go. <laughs> and he's his uh, relic, stream. he has the Falchon's Wing, which is the fly relic. 
So. Yeah, so the Falchus Wing lets you move super fast, Elliot. Makes you move 12 instead of um, 6. It's like, we in our battle reports on youtube.com slash Wargaming, please subscribe, big push. Um, <laughs> we call it Peach's Dress. Because <laughs> uh, Princess Peach from the Super Mario flies around in a dress, so... What would he actually play? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's not very boring. Tau. <laughs> Right, so news from table two. Can we cut uh, over to table two before we so start? So the vehicles... Wait, we'll, just, we'll cut over and have a look. Okay. I don't have to stop, though. Um, so Tom, his, his vehicle did whiff, so he's not been able to kill many bikes. He has put six wounds onto the Caladius. Nice. Um, was that with the smasher guns? Maybe with the smasher guns that yeah. was? What put the wounds onto the Caladius? Perfect. Yeah. Smasher guns. It was the, the smasher, smasher guns, guns, yeah. Mean, yeah makes Perfect. Sense. So smasher yeah, so guns they, are really good. So they, they get... only managed to do six wounds on the Caladius, though. That's, That's not enough. Whiffy. Six wounds. We've yeah. now moved into Lewis's, um, Lewis's movement phase as well. So. Okay. Yeah, so Tom has got five points so far. Really strong turn to start. I bet he wish he could have killed more bikes. Yeah. Yeah, the bikes are going to be the issue. Um, so with the smasher guns, Elliot, they get D3 shots and then... Uh, you hit on fives, but what you do is rather than rolling normally, you roll 2d6 over the toughness of the vehicle, and then it's minus 4 on d6 damage. So it's it's interesting, we've got two arc lists on the table. Yeah. Um, if you just if, spot the difference, go over to table one, I can tell you that the psychic phase and the jumper's just gone off in some looters. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look where these looters might be. Oh, <laughs> They're in oh the, look. Uh, we can't, <laughs> maybe we can draw on the screen. It's the same table. <laughs> You're just getting different timelines. It's the same army, just playing look? different so enemies at different here. times. <laughs> uh, code Dave Code, thank you for follow. But it is interesting having orcs on the stream. Don't see too much of orcs, or I don't see too much of orcs anyway. Out and about. Yeah, so orcs are quite competitive at this point. Yeah. Um, because of the, they are a gunline army, funnily enough, but with enough to tie wrap stuff everywhere. Do you know, like bubble wrap with we all the metal boys. Scrivo bringing them down to into the hell storm. Yeah, he did. he's a good lad. I do have iron jaws in Sigma as well, but. Well, there you go. You got to uh, have that green strength. Yeah. So the looters have dropped to the to the right of all the smasher guns. The same that the way they did in, on table two. Let's have a look. So the looters have dropped to the right of the smasher guns that are all on the building. So it's like a mirror match. Inks the kit soon. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Um, cheeky top. Uh, I guess we just settle on Age of Sigma. Well, Age, if you want to watch Age of Sigma today, the beautiful Rob Symes from the Honest Wargamer is to our right today streaming live all day. So, uh, twitch.tv slash the honest wall game if you want to watch the AOS. In other words, is the invitation over? Um, it will be, it is not over. Conrad versus Josh in the final uh, this evening from 8 pm local time. So, the looters are just opening up now on table one. And the stream presenters look spiffing, but now have gone very ca gone casual, very disappointing. Well, we're all in the same, we're all dressed the same. We're all in a team we're t shirt. We're team brochure. It's, it's, it's T Sports time. Just before we, I think Tank's ready for an update, but just before that, I can tell you that Jordan has made a bit of a mistake on table one. He didn't use forewarning when them jumpers moved, so he could have actually killed quite a few he of them. He could have shot them with the wand. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So. Um, he chose not to do that, or okay. either he's forgotten, and either way, the looters have survived. Either so. way. So what we'll do now, shall we cut to Tank? Yeah, of course. So Tank is our roving reporter, uh, copyright of the Honest Wargamer, because they did it first. Um, so what we're going to do, he's going to get a full update from Tank about some cool players from the rest of the event. And we've got a new view for today, so hopefully it works. Morning, everyone. So yeah, so I've been uh, been looking around in the hall below. There's a lot of tables to cover. Tried to pick out some of the uh, the more well-known players and the people with interesting lists. Uh, if there's anyone you want to hear about in particular, uh, just drop us some names in the chat and I'll be happy to go and see how they're getting on for you. Um, start out with the ones uh, we sort of picked out. Uh, Anthony Chu with his uh, flyer spam list. He's going first against uh, Adam York's Marines, and uh, I think he's going to make a mess there. That's really going to hurt, and uh, I, I expect that they'll be finished in probably the next 20 minutes or something. 
Uh, Simon Prittis with his Tau, he's going second against uh, Lee Hall's sort of uh, flyer spam, venom spam and ravages. So they've both got a horrendous amount of firepower. Um, and it'll be a case of if the Tau can sort of weather that initial barrage from Lee and what damage they can do in return. Again, I think that one's not going to go the full distance. Uh, Josh Def is going second against Ed Pazek's Custodies. Um, Josh only lost a, a Hunter going second, so and he was starting to shoot in his first shooting phase when I left. Uh, Conrad Barkovitz with his Eldar, uh, he's, he won the roll to go first against uh, Simon Edwards' Mixed Chaos list. Uh, he won the roll to go first and took it, and uh, as I left, he just successfully doomed and jinxed the Chaos Knight and was about to go to work on that, so he's in a good place there. Um, Malik Rubio with his uh, sort of mech imperial soup gun line with all the efficient shooting he's playing against Qu uh, Clifford Caps White Scars uh, Malik won the roll to go first and took it and it looked like he was making a real mess and I think that'll be a bit of a similar one to the Anthony Chu game where that one's not going to go much past a couple of turns a uh, bit of a mismatch there uh, Mike Porter is playing again with his... He's brought Guard and Blood Angels characters to this tournament. He's playing Gareth Perkon, who's got pure Grey Knights. Uh, the Grey Knights won the roll to go first and gave Mike Porter the first turn. Um, the Grey Knights actually managed to deny Mike Porter a kill in the first turn, and Mike Porter's just sort of pushed into the midboard. So uh, still a lot to play for in that one. Uh, Reese Robbins with his white scars. Um, it looks like quite a, a cagey game against uh, Richard Ingham with his Imperial Soup. Um, not really sort of gone one way or the other yet. They're just uh, both getting board position and playing cagey. Uh, James Ramsey's bought a, a really cool list. He's got... Um, you can find the full list on BCP, but he's, he's roughly got 60 intercessors. Um, and quite a lot of infiltrate in Primaris Marines too. And uh, they've not stat they're just still deploying. He's playing against four Tyrannis Knights, uh, Chris, Chris Barris. Um, he'd sort of, uh, he's kind of set up a midfield castle inside one of the L's with all his um, infiltrators and um, eliminators and he's just about to sort of create a bit of a tower of power on the hill with uh, the 60 intercessors by the look of it so that'll be a really interesting one to keep an eye on uh nick nanavati with his gsc is playing uh, ryan callanan with his uh, knight and guard list um when i went to that table nick had gone to the toilet or probably gone getting beer or something knowing him but that it looked like he was all over the knights already and um I, I don't think that one's going to last much longer. So back to Mikey and Elliot, and um, I'll speak to you soon. So there we go, guys. That was an update from Tank, the roving reporter, copyright honest wargamer today. Um, so we are at the Lon in London. We are at the London 40k Grand Tournament. We are going to be doing coverage all weekend for you. This is round one, live from London on Hellstone Wargaming. How amazing is that? Pretty amazing. Pretty, it is amazing. Pretty amazing. So I'm Mikey. I'm joined by the lovely Elliot today. We, do, we did all the pre, pre press coverage. Yes. And we got some more coverage yes. afterwards as well. But we got coverage all weekend. We just, I we think just it was Farrell, Farrell blank, Sites. And I was Lionel Brarium <laughs> and, and Drew Carey. And you was, what your name again? Adam Startes. You were Adam Startes. I was Drew Carey. No. Or was I Adam you Startes? Adam Startes Either way. Thanks, Drew Carey. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, we are we are live from the London Grand Tournament. This is, we are covering two tables for you all day. So this is currently table two. This is Tom versus Lewis, Orcs versus Custodies. Elliot, do you want to tell me a little bit about what's happened? Yeah, so I can just I can just tell you now that uh, so Lewis did spend a stratagem, spent some CP to use Tech Adept. Okay. Uh, managed to get two wounds back on his Caladius, which put it up into its top bracket just before the shooting phase. So that's nice. quite nice. Um, now, his Praetors have rapid fire into those boys. Cheeky. I'm not sure how many kills he's managed to get. Um, but he is also trying to focus on getting the first. Ooh. Something amazing just happened in Age of Sigmar, so make sure you check out up. on his walking. <laughs> um, so basically, he's trying to get the first, first strike, I believe. Has he got old school? 
Uh, yeah, he's got old school. Gangbusters. Yeah, so he's trying to either school. kill the, the he's trying to kill the Grots, which are close to Lewis's water bottle. Right. Well. Okay. I'm curious to what in. So what Praetors killed nine boys. I'm Who curious what he can score gangbusters on in this list. Mm. So gangbusters in the ITC is to do six wounds to a unit that has multiple models with four or more wounds. Right, okay. Which would be a good selection for the smasher guns, but the smasher guns are individual units when they deploy. So you can't actually score gangbusters on those, unless the LGTs rolled it differently. Um, but I'm curious to why he's chosen gangbusters. So. Oh, it looks like the second is the wrong way around. I think that might be it. So what we'll do is we'll cut over to table one. So, well, John, uh, so this is Boris versus Jordan, Orcs again versus uh, Eldar Flyers. So Elliot, do you want to tell me all about it? Yeah, so there's lots of shooting going on over here at the moment. So the looters opened up. They fired at the two Razor Wings, putting them down to one wound and two wounds, respectively. Um, then... Boris was going to shoot twice, but Jordan vectored it, and he rolled a six for that vector as well. So it means that Boris isn't able to use the stratagem, but does have to pay the cost, which is pretty nasty. Uh, however, Boris returned with a good play. He used the tractor cannon to blow up the razor wing in the middle of the board, which was only on a few wounds. Uh, for those of people who don't know, when you destroy a vehicle with a tractor cannon, it automatically explodes. So we targeted the razor wing in the middle of the board, which then was able to dish out a load of wounds for the stuff around it. Pop. Um, and we've just heard from the table that Boris has rolled strength 11 for his shock attack guns. Wow. Mm, so only two shots. Two shots, but strength 11. Strength 11. So when you roll over 10, you do mortal wounds in addition, D3 mortal wounds in addition to normal damage. Strength 11 minus 5 D6 damage yeah. with mortal wounds as well. Amazing. We have just been told that, well, we just found out that the secondaries were the wrong way around on the stream. So Tom's gone for gangbusters, right, not, okay. not Lewis. So yeah. we'll, that'll be updated when we cut back over. Thank you very much, Dan. Appreciate it. Is the scores correct? Just the secondaries in the wrong place, that's all. So let's cut to a second view of table one. As you can see, the orc horde towering over of this piece of terrain. You can just see the sheer dread of the Eldar Flyers there, sat doing nothing, waiting to strike back, but they don't have a lot of places to land. That's going to be the issue in this game, is Boris has so many models to smother the board to stop the Eldar Flyers going where they want to go. What I would like to know is how effective was that explosion with the razor wing that went in the middle of the board? How much did that manage to kill? Yeah, we're going to find out from Toby, the table bottom today. Um, so, yeah, we've got all the smash guns. So we should talk about the LGT terrain. So they've really, really improved from oh, last year. So the Warlord looks like it's taken three wounds. Oh, the rest of it is in Peter's dress. Tank the uh, explosion pretty well. Okay. Um, so the the big block things that all the smasher guns are on are hills, which is why they can deploy in there. And then we have got lots of L-shaped ruins and then some area terrain. So. Uh, so yeah, so we got Jordan on the left in his nice red hat versus Boris and all of those smasher guns. So we are playing ITC, it's kill more, hold more, and then you choose secondaries, you choose three depending what army you're playing against or playing with. So have we got a couple of updates on this uh, table? Not really, we've got one update over on table two. Um, so they're still in Lewis's shooting phase at the moment. Now, let's cut to table two. Yeah, so you can say that too. The Telamon. Yeah. I mean, I can't change yeah. the, the screen. Yeah. Um, the Telamon moved, so wasn't able to fire its top gun twice. Yeah, the Smiculus bolt launcher. But it launcher. has managed to kill a smasher gun. Oh. It is the only thing that's dead <laughs> on the okay. orc side, okay. which for a hard arm is pretty. <laughs> it's not bad. Pretty scary. It's not bad at all. Um, but he has killed a smasher gun, and obviously smasher guns are quite smashing. Yeah. So. I believe you can buy the senior packs. You certainly can. You certainly can buy these senior packs from TT Combat. So they have uh, sort of the terrain out for the event. Every terrain on every table is the same. It's all standard setup. And the terrain's not bad as well. It, like is, we talk like, about it looks decent and it's very functional. And I like the sort of symmetrical. Uh, it's fair terrain. It reminds me of um, when you see like games like Command and Conquer that people used to play online competitively, and the tournament maps would always be exact mirrors of each other. So yeah. no one could say, oh, well, you were on that side, so you had a much easier game. 
Yeah, it exactly. makes it the same for everyone. There can be no excuses. No one can pull around and go, well, actually, you chose the side that I wanted, so I would have won if I chose that side. That's exactly what they're trying to avoid in this sort of setup. It's like the terrain is equal on both sides. You don't need to roll for sides because it doesn't yes. matter. The first thing that players should do, um, the first thing that players should do is go to the table, set up the terrain again, make sure it's in the right position, and then, then they just roll, roll to go first. So you roll off and decide who goes first or second. So hold more, sorry. So. I think we're just going to get a quick update from table one because I think that's the end of the first um, of Boris's first turn. We'll have a quick look at all those smasher guns once again. So uh, it looks so, like Boris has scored four points. Yeah, so turn. Boris um, has just ended his turn. He did manage to get hold one, kill one, and two big game hunters. Yeah. Yeah, Boris is saying something. I'm sure it's very interesting, and, but I can't hear what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was great. I love Boris, he's a great guy. A massive shout out to Badman Cafe for sponsoring the stream, uh, which made two tables possible. Would not be possible without those guys, so high five and amazing to them. That's why you get to see their logo everywhere. That's a little bit of what we can do to say thanks. So. So this is a top down from table one. Um, so we're just going into Jordan's first turn. As you can see, two big game hunters, one kill one, one hold one. Still got 10 CP, still plenty to play with. Loads and loads of Grot shields to play with. He's got loads of Grots in front of the looters. Um, and then just, yeah, I think I think well, with uh, Jordan's list, he's got loads and loads of shots that are really good at killing the big stuff. So the smasher guns aren't going to be an issue. Yeah. However, he's not got many places to land, which is an issue for Eldar players. They want to dominate the board. Especially as those arcs start spreading further and further out. Exactly. And also, Boris has used the 3 CP strat to extend the custom force field to a tremendous amount. Um, so everything's going to have a 5 plus in one. So, which is really, really good. Really, really good play. It's a good thing about orcs at the minute. If you go first, you can be so defensive. But a lot of people are like, orcs are a combat army. Yeah. And they're not. They're an artillery army. Yeah. And they have orc boys just to get in the way. These bad moons, the bloody, bloody bad ones. <laughs> obviously, uh, Jordan has all the bikes as well. He's got all the scatter bikes. Um, so we'll see what he can do with those. He needs to remove a lot of units to stop um, Boris scoring his secondaries. You know, ground control and recon. Ground control being hold every objective at the end of the game. Um, well, hold get a, every every objective you hold, you get a point. Of course, it's yeah. quite easy for orcs. You got so many units. Yeah. And then uh, recon is have a unit in every quarter of the board. So, which he will be able to do from turn two. Yeah, of course. So, Jordan needs to be really clever and use the flyers to screen out Boris's movement. Yeah, because Boris's obviously... game plan's really working at the moment, isn't it? Lewis yeah. is going to have to return strongly. Yeah, it is only turn one, so it could go either way. Um, Boonster, Saurus Knight, thank you very much for follow. Um, but, yeah, so what you need to do is be really clever. And, obviously, because they are aircraft, you can walk under them now. Yep. But because you only move six, you can struggle. You have to end more than an inch away, so you still have to advance through them, and sometimes you might not be able to make it all the way through. So Jordan has to be really clever to try and screen out Boris's movement and stop Boris being able to completely dominate this board. Which at, at this moment in time, obviously it's only turn one. Yeah. At this moment in time, he will be able to. So, um, so yeah, and also obviously as uh, Guard Daddy's put, put it out, he needs to be careful to not let Boris cover the board because he needs to land next turn. Yeah, of course. Like we've just seen in the comments, it might be possible to, to get them to make mistakes and auto-kill. Something's yeah. going down on table two. There's a... Yeah, well, let's cut over to table two. Yeah, there's a nosy. big... Uh... Let's see what's happening. Let's see what the cracker lacking. Tom's rolling some dice. It looks like they are playing the Warhammer, which is always good. And so we can see the similar thing here. What Tom's doing is he's throwing out all of his boys as a big screen, controlling all the board and holding so many objectives. So we're going to get, you know, it sees ground. There's five objectives in this mission, so they're just going to hold so many. So, oh, look, an airport full of orcs. Yes, and a grass field in the snow full of orcs as well. It's, it's like watching the same play. It's like watching one person play two armies at the same time on two yeah. tables. Yeah, it's a, a bit weird. Way, yeah, it's very strange. Like, we kind of expected a very similar play, but I didn't expect, like, it to be the same deployment, the same other, dad yeah. jumps, you know? They both deployed all the smasher guns on the hill in the middle of the board, and then dad jumped the looters to the right-hand side of the smasher guns in turn one. Um, so, in terms of what's happened, so, obviously, we ended the shooting phase with the smasher gun being killed by the Teleman. Uh, that then... Oh, and also the Orc boys, we lost 11 of them Okay. in the centre. Synthex the city, thank you very much for following. Uh, that allowed, then... The custodies to get a charge off on the boys. Nice. They dealt 12 wounds to 11 boys. Mm -hmm. But he was able 
Tom was able to make three feel no pains. So Yikes. the unit hasn't gone, the unit is staying. Okay. We know what that means. The unit staying? If the, well, if the unit can stay on the board, can they not do some spicy stratagems to come back? Forms? Yeah, so green tide. Yes. Yeah, green tide. Also deny and kill one and deny and kill more. I thought I was doing a clever then, but then you were like, what? I was waiting for you to <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> uh, you're the pro player, Elliot. You're the one with all the info. Green Tide, of course. So it puts Tom in a really strong position to bring back a whole unit against the Custodians, which can kill these units quite well. Yeah, but if he can just hold on just to a free one unit. or two boys. He's just trying to get those yeah. uh, those feel no pains off, and he is in the assault phase, so it's not even as if he can try and kill them with a bit of small arms fire or whatever. Yeah. If, he, if them boys don't die, they don't die, and they're yeah. coming back. I found that a lot. Of, the way to beat Orcs, when you've got 90 Orc boys, is to either delete a unit, delete a unit completely so you can't Green Tide, or leave it, do like 12 wounds to that unit. Kill like 12 boys, because they can only green tide if there's less than half left. Yeah. Less than 15. Um, so you kind of like kill 10 to 12. They're forced to do a morale, uh, so they probably won't fail it. But then, uh, depending on how many models are around there, they're probably not going to fail the morale anyway. Because if you kill 12, there'll be morale 18, because they add up, it's depending on how many guys left in the unit. Yeah. So they can't fail, they'll be leadership 6 after the after the mob rule that. Uh, yeah, the mob rule. So then we leave ship six, so they can't fail a morale. So there's 18 of them left. Can't green tide, then you finish the unit. So the orcs have just swung back uh, okay. into the custodians. But what he's using that to do is to consolidate onto the objective to give himself hold more. Yeah, which makes sense. Gives him a free yeah. six-inch move by in combat. So clever play. <laughs> everyone, we just had a big announcement that the bar is now open and everyone is super happy. <laughs> there was a big cheer from... Yeah. I think there's sort of four, there's like 500 players in this hall, isn't there, Mikey, playing? Yeah. A mixture of different games. I mean, I think the vast majority of 40k players, but we've got some narrative stuff on. Yeah, so there's some doubles on yesterday. Uh, host some bad game map. Uh, some narrative. There's also AOS. Uh, so if you want to watch some AOS coverage, twitch.tv slash the honest wargamer. It's actually on screen right now. Rob is looking absolutely mighty fine today. So if you want to check him out, they're going to see them. Um, uh, yeah, you, you, this is true. The mob rule, Elliot, interestingly enough, is optional that people have started realising and pointing out. Oh. So to have your leadership count as high, so you can basically auto-pass, or you can make yourself fail to take more damage. Um, you can take more damage to lose more boys to green tide. Green tide, right. Yeah, super cheeky. I saw that play by Matt Barley who I played at, um, at our one day oh, So event. he elected to have the worst morale. Yeah, to force himself to fail so he could green tide. Oh. Cheeky, like though, that. isn't it? It's I very like cheeky. That. They just hawks just do what they like, don't they? They're just yeah. great. <laughs> so I think I believe that's the end of uh, turn one on table two. So Tom has got kill one, hold one, and hold more, and gangbusters recon and old school. So it's currently six four to Tom because Lewis scored hold one, hold more, uh, kill one, hold one, and as a reaper. So he's killed killed loads of models, but not enough. So what we'll do, we'll update the scores on screen, going into turn two, and then we'll catch up with table one and see what's happening. Because it's just orc movement phase and not lots happening there. So this is, um, I think we're still in Jordan's movement phase. I think we're still in Jordan's movement phase, Toby. Yeah. So it's still moving these Eldar flyers. Um, it's obviously got a wave serpent there. Oh, there we go. There's the hunter. So I, b I believe from, from the painting, there's three, and the, the Eldar flyers, there's three blue ones and then there's two blue ones with yellow one. I believe the two blue ones with yellow one are the Crimson Hunters, and then the three pure blue ones are the Exarchs. I'm sure we'll get confirmation if needed. Um, but Jordan's flyer is flying backwards and forwards. It is obviously Eldar, so it can fly anywhere it likes anyway. So, <laughs> Toby's just shaking his head, which is just hilarious. <laughs> God, the energy drink's like paint stripper. Yeah. Thank you to <laughs> Dean uh, from Amsterdam. I was playing the event who brought us Monster today. We're going to need it. So... So, yeah, I was going to think it's that drink that I meant tastes like paint stripper. <laughs> you can think we're really ungrateful. It's just sugary, that's why. <laughs> um, so just quickly, we don't need to cut to table two, but I can just tell you about what's going on. Yeah. Just some morale. Um, so we took the D3, did mob rule. Yeah. Them, I believe that's where they Better take the breaking D3. Heads. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they, they so punch take D3 each other and get back in line. The leadership test. Yeah, so we did that on all of them. We took like one sort of one wound per unit, but it does mean that the grots have held on. So he's not able to kill the Grots. Nice. Stopped him getting kill more. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Let's see what these guys are doing. They're moving some dice. Moving some dice. Look, we are using Badmoon Cafe dice today. Very pretty. 
Boris is like, maybe got an advantage on this table because they're his dice. Yeah. With his name on. Yeah, that's and why he's on his t-shirt using... and mix his army. He's I feel like that dice. might be weighted towards Boris in this game. There you go. So we're just doing a couple of measuring. I think we're trying to find out, work out where the flies are going to go. Where they can go. But I'm sure Toby will keep us right up to date. But yeah, we are all wearing casual wear today. We're all wearing t-shirts because we've got a long day today. And it's there's like 500 people in this hall today. So, so many events going on. 400 in the main event. Um, and then obviously all the AOS and stuff as well. So I will be in my Sunday best tomorrow though. Do not Sunday worry. Sunday best for Sunday. Sunday best. So we're just doing, it looks like we're doing some psychic powers from table one. Um, and then Boris has probably not denied it. So, do we know it's been cast? Nope. It looks like Boris is spending CP to try and deny power, which he does. Yeah. <laughs> Toby's just going to give us a quick update what happened there. Sounds like he denied Doom. Yeah. So Doom was denied. Uh, for the CP the guide has gone off on the scatter bikes. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So he's going to try and Doom a unit of boys and just delete them with the scatter bikes. Yeah. yeah. So, however, they re-roll in hits, but no longer re-rolling wins. That's the important thing yeah. about the green tide is that if you're, gonna, if you're going to shoot at arcs, kill them. Kill them. Kill the or unit. Kill Don't try and chip them away because you'll just leave yourself in a really bad position. Yeah. Don't kill like 20. That's too many. Do what I said earlier, but just be careful about the morale tricks. Yeah. There we go. So yes, yeah, so we do have Barry's on stream with all the orcs, and we have Tom with all the orcs. So it's orctastic. Right. So um, yeah, Grot Shield has just been vected, and now the planes are opening up into the looters. Oof. Okay. So Grot Shield, what that would allow Barry to do, it would be allowed to choose some Grots uh, to okay. take wounds on the looters instead of the looters dying. But Vex has been spent, so four CP down. Um, to stop that going off, which is super, super good. Yeah, so just been told we are starting with the boys, but it does mean that the planes are going to be able to do that in a second. Yeah, so scat lasers into the boys. Yes. Cool. So that's what we're seeing now on screen. Very nice. So it's like the saves are about to come oh, in. Oh, the scat bikes are firing into looters as well. Okay, so scat bikes into looters. Makes cool. sense. Get them killed. Get rid. They're the ones that are going to do the main firepower against the They're going to do work, aren't they? Yeah. Where's all the guts of the mech guns? Uh, pass. <laughs> I think the girl got left at home. It's a long way from down the road. So. I think they're hiding behind the hill and we can't see them on camera. It's a nice view, this. We can see the dice rolls. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, you, only get, you, you miss half the table, but it looks nice. And it's not bad for this game. Some games you can't really do this, but there you go. You feel like you're there. Looks like five off saves. He's made six. So three, six, nine dead. Ten dead. Eight dead. Eight dead. There you go. Close enough. I was in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> one up, one down. Eight looters dead. So Doris is going to choose selectively which ones he loses. You can see the big thing going on there. Yep. So what he's doing, he's doing the line of sight check, gets his face on stream, one, number one. Yep. Number two, he's trying to make sure he can hide from half the planes. So the more planes he can hide from. Oh, Toby's doing it. Bit further down, bit further down. Bit further down, mate. Hey! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There's Toby, Mr. Table Boss. <laughs> so, hope everyone's well today. We're going to be live all day today from the London 40k Drunk Grand Tournament. Uh, we have four games for you today three of the main event and the final of the invitation on this evening, starting at 8 o'clock. So while there's a lot of shooting going on in table one, I don't know if we want to pop over to table two. Yeah, so go over to table two. Yeah, so go for a top view or side view? What do you reckon? Mm, let's go for a side view on this one. Side view coming on. There we go. There's Tom's head. <laughs> right, so I can tell you that we've just... So we're just going into the shooting phase. So Daka Daka has been used on the looters. Um, but while that's being resolved, I'll tell you about what happened in the psychic phase. Sure. So there were two smites that were cast on the bikes. They did manage to kill a Virtus Praetor, so pretty good. Very you good, can very kill good. a Praetor with, uh, with just some smites. And Warpath has been cast on the red group of boys, which are towards the center. So that cheeky. gives them stuff like give them an extra attack. And... Very cheeky. Yeah, so that's strong. So the looters now, they're firing at... What are they firing at? The Praetor in the center? Perfect. 
And we'll just see in a second. Oh, oh. I think we're going to go to the top down view because we've just seen Tom's head. So. You can see there the Praetors in the centre. That's what the. Yeah, they're shooting into the ones in the middle. the looters are shooting at. Yeah, they've used Daka Daka to get that exploding rolls. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to be a Warhammer pro by the end of this if tournament. Talking, doing a stratagem name and getting it right. I'm, I'm proud of you. So proud of you. So, uh, so one Cathy's versus Praetor has been killed and the other has taken two wounds. It is ITC, Herbert J. Apologies for the delay. Uh, the cafe south of the river where they are in London is north of the Thames. Yeah, it's a miles away in London because they've got too many people on the road, mate. It's, too, it's just daft. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Don't you agree? It is in a good location, though. I mean, it, we we were there on Thursday. It is a nice part of town. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's relatively quiet for London, which is quite cool. Yeah. It's also in a massive student area. Yeah, this is true. So that that's really... It's a really... Yeah, we checked out Badman Cafe Good on call. Thursday. Yeah, it's really underneath good. like halls of residence. So there's Perfect lots location. of students in there playing uh, like board games, etc. So it's a pretty sweet location. Really, I'd have really killed good. for something like that when I was in was doing you have my killed time more? in Sheffield. If, would you have killed more or hold more for that location? I'd have killed more <laughs> to hopefully hold sometime. <laughs> because it is ITC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like Guard Daddy just said, it is it's easy enough to get I mean we just sat in an Uber for sort of thirty minutes. Between four of us the Uber was quite cheap. Except so, for me, I had to get it on my own, but they Yeah, didn't. you had to get it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> nightmare. We don't Absolute care, we nightmare. don't care. You're our supreme overlord. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you gotta get sticks on time. <laughs> <laughs> so the shooting phase still underway on table two, I believe. Um on the both yeah, so Table two is happening a bit quicker. I think there's more, a bit more dynamic. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, lot more happening. Lots of thinking on table one, so we'll just leave them to it for a bit. So it looks like the vehicles are firing from the hill. So the smasher okay. guns are opening up now. Yeah. Um, some saves being made. Yeah. Oh. Damage. Right. Okay. So I can confirm that the smasher guns are firing into the Praetors so that are to the right, to the closest ones to us. Yeah, so the left on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Done six damage and that's a bike gone. Oof. The thing is, though, bikes do have a really good to, save. Two plus see if four. You can draw a line of sight now from some other ones. I'm guessing to kill that final Praetor. Oh, there's two. There's two left. Yeah, there's two left. Getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Getting excited. Getting a little bit excited there. We're going to find out if that kills you. And that's going to probably max out gangbusters at that point. Ah. Okay, so it's not just two Praetors. There's a Praetor there. And, and the shield captain. There's a Forge World shield captain. Well, it's a Forge World model, but it's acting as a shield captain within yeah, this game. Cool. So that's the. The uh, longer red bike just behind. So we've got the Verted Praetor at the front, but the longer red bike at the behind is signifying I've just been told the, uh, there's quite a, ha captain. a lot happening. Sorry to interrupt. On table one. Woo, but what's going to happen? No, not yet. No, don't no, worry. No. Don't get no. excited. Uh, Toby's going to give us a, just a big update at the end because there's lots of bits happening. So what we'll do is get a full rundown of that Eldar shooting phase at the, at the end. Yeah. Wicked. So it means we can stick around on table two for a bit longer and see, pretty, to be fair. and see the orcs wrap up the shooting phase. Yeah, and then we'll be able to see the Eldar wrap up the shooting phase against the orcs. Exactly, yeah. So, super good. So some good games again in the opening. The quality of uh, play, I feel, has been quite good. I've been very impressed. Yeah, well, this is one of the biggest tournaments in the world. So you'd expect the, player, the caliber of players coming to be very, very high. We're just that camera, so Tom's back of Tom's neck looks just a little bit Just for a spicy interruption, I can confirm that the looters are dead. On table one? Yes. Ouch, okay, that's a big blow. That is a really big blow. So it looks like the Versus Praetor's been killed, so the Shield Captain will now be the closest model. Uh, it's not yet. But nope. the Versus Praetor's are dead. So, that was, I mean, that's one more unit, right? That's Gangbusters maxed out. Uh, they, oh, because the Rangers are going to be closer, you can see on the hill. So. so I think it's the Rusty 17, basically, the Rangers are keeping that, that keeping shield alive. captain alive. Yeah. Yeah. But the Vegas Praetors are dead, which is big. So. Oh, 
And maybe intrigued by his dice rolling technique. Dice kills, yeah. Yeah, so he, he not only kills his biceps, he kills his dice as well. Diceps. <laughs> Boris did take some looters, yeah, but he's not taking them anymore. They are now all dead. No, back in the case they go. Back home to Badmin Cafe. Until game two. <laughs> back in the case they go. Yeah. It's a really nice venue, this. This Lee Valley uh, Leisure Centre. It's, it's very open and airy. Yeah, which is super cool. It's very, very nice. bright. Let's say there's 500 people here. It's not too loud either. No, yeah, I thought it was going to be um, going to be sort of deafening. And people we're really worried. Struggling got, to hear each other. We've got the mic super close. You can hear I what we're I guess that's what it's built for, though, right? Crowds. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it is an athletic centre, and I've been running around all day, so... Yeah, the dice tray is super cool. I think it's a custom one, but yeah, it's got like little popper buttons in the corner, so it's flat. And it's made of neoprene, so it's like very similar to the uh, the mouse pad slash um, battle mat type material, but it doesn't slide either. The good and bad, because sometimes dice bob bounce out, which is a bit of a nightmare, like that. So I think we're ready for a tank update, but just quickly, uh, just to wrap up table two, I can t I tell you that Tom is trying to kill that last... Um, Caladius. The last Caladius. The one uh, in the top right, near Danny. Yeah, so top yeah. right, that one's got a big dice on it. So he's only got five death. wounds left, so he's been firing his uh, big mech gun, which I don't think has done anything, but also the shock attack guns as well. He did okay. get strength 10 on them. Nice. Yeah, Very good. So. so what we'll do, well, we'll leave Tom to finish that off, get, let him have a bit of a break. He's been on camera all day now. Yeah, so. and hopefully after this update from yeah. Tank, so we'll, we'll go over to... to Tank, where the roving reporter is going to give us an update about the rest of the event. <laughs> Morning, everyone. So, uh, a bit of news from the floor for you. Uh, some games we've been following. Uh, Anthony Chu with his uh, obnoxious amount of flyers. He's just mopping up now against Adam York. Uh, he he made a mess on his first shooting phase. Adam York um, killed one or two planes in his first turn, and um, it, it's looking like Anthony will probably table Adam on the second turn. So that one's pretty much done. Uh, Simon Pridis against Lee Hall, or Lee Hale, excuse me, Lee. Um, Lee went first, had a very good turn, killed most of Simon's drones and a lot of his screening units. Uh, not looking good for Simon, that one, actually. He's not out the game by any means, but Lee has a good board position. He's through most of Simon's drones, and uh, Simon's first shooting phase was a bit of a whiff, and he, uh, he didn't kill that much, so... He didn't seem too happy about that game. Uh, Josh Def's Marine List, um, he's looking on track for an easy win against uh, Ed Pazek's Custodies. Um, on his first shooting phase, Josh Def was able to kill uh, all the Caladius tanks and the minus one's hit banner character. And uh, he looked to be thoroughly in the driving seat on that one. Uh, Conrad Barkowitz with his Eldar Flyers, uh, he's killed Simon Edwards' Knight and all his Lord Discordance and I think it'll just be a case of sort of mop up for him from there on so he'll definitely be uh, progressing to a win uh, Malik Rubio is also mopping up it looks like that game will be over after two turns uh, he was just sort of killing the last of uh, Clifford Capp's white scars when I, when I looked on uh, Mike Porter with his Guard and Blood Angels looked like he was sort of putting the final nail in the coffin against uh, Gareth Perkins Grey Knights um, when I went by the table he was telling me that he managed to uh, to wrap a Grey Knights Land Raider with some uh, good elite units inside and then uh, kill the Land Raider with a Basilisk and he uh, he put Guardsmen around the Land Raider in a way that all the contents of the Land Raider were automatically killed so uh as any Grey Knights player will know, he's lost a lot of points there uh, with uh, losing the Land Raider and some good elite units inside. Uh, Reese Robbins uh, with his White Scars, he's looking on course for an easy win against Richard Ingham's Imperial Soup. Uh, apparently, there were some unlucky dice for Richard. Um, the Castellan, Knight Castellan using the Raven Strat failed to kill a Repulsor, so start, that tells the story of that game there. Uh, Nick Nanavati, he has won easily against uh, Ryan Callinan with Knights. Uh, 
bit of an interesting moment in that game. Uh, Ryan outflanked his knight gallant. Nick filled all the board edges with all his gribblies, uh, meaning that the gallant was automatically killed because it couldn't come in turn three. Uh, James Ramsey, super interesting list with the uh, 80 or so uh, Primaris Marines. Um, he's playing uh, Chris Barris with uh, four Tyrannis Knights. Uh, that game looks like it's close. Neither of them have lost that much. Uh, I asked them how they were going and, and James said not very well, but he seemed to be in the zone, so I didn't ask for him to elaborate. But I'll keep an eye on that one for you. And uh, yeah, back to Mikey and Elliot. So we are back. Thank you very much, Tank. Looking absolutely ripped today, as people have started to point out. Tank, people have got a bit of a man crush for you. <laughs> uh, a couple of people are saying you've got a bit of a man crush. They want you to bend down and show off the shorts. <laughs> Someone said, drop something behind him so he has to bend over. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Toby, Toby's now saying that he must mean him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, we are live from the London 40k Grand Tournament. Um, we are covering Ground 1. We're Hellstone Wargaming. Um, uh, you guys are the viewers who we love. Whom we love. Yeah. So we're here. Uh, obviously, we streamed the Invitational yesterday. We had four great games of Warhammer. We certainly the did. final of that will be 8 p.m. tonight. But before that... We've got some games, sort of the early rounds of the LGT Open, which yes. is a 400-man event, pretty big. Pretty much, about yeah. 400 man, yeah. One of the biggest really events cool. in the world. Yep. And we, we were covering two tables every game, super cool. So we've covered eight games of 40k already. Yeah. And this is nine and ten. So, yes. Yes, yes. that was maths. Yes, that was maths. Quick, Quick maths. maths. Yes. Uh, two plus two plus two plus two plus is two. eight. <laughs> yeah, it was hard, it was hard. Two times so, five. Uh, we're, we're back with table two. Table two again. Tell table me about two. It, Elliot. Yeah. Um, so I can tell you that Caladius, that was on five wounds before the break, um, is actually now dead. The super duper mega Death Star Cannon of Doom, uh, yeah. which is what it's called, uh, killed the Caladius, which was pretty good. Uh, but at the end of that turn, so we found out that there's actually been a little bit of a mistake. Um, <sighs> With gangbusters. Yeah, so Thomas has took gangbusters. Yeah, so gangbusters okay. is for every six wounds inflicted on a unit that contains a, more than one model with three or more wounds, score a point. Units of swarm can't be chosen. So what it means is, is every six wounds in that unit, you get a point. However, the issue is, is that uh, Lewis has three units of three bikes. So in each unit, um, there is um, how many wounds in each unit? There's four. So there's 12. 12. So that is. Uh, that's two points. He's maxed out at three, basically. He can't score any more points. Yeah, so. Busters. Yeah, he thought he okay. could carry on just scoring it and max it out, but he's sort of bottomed himself out at three. He can't score any more than that. Yeah, which is interesting, so. Yeah. So they basically agreed that he can't score anymore with Gangbusters, so he's maxed out there, but he's still he's climbing away with the points there at 11 4. So he's got kill on a whole one, three for Gangbusters, two for Recon, and then one. Uh, one more. <laughs> we only get confirmation from Matteo about that yeah. because we got told, and then I and then it clicked in my head that maybe you can max that out. Yeah. So. Um. What I will say is, a uh, mistake on my part, it wasn't the five wound Caladius that died, it was an eight wound Caladius that died. Oof. The five the five wound one is still there. Yeah. So we've just we just had confirmation as well that gangbusters was ruled incorrectly. So so cool. There's the twelve wounds in each of those gangbuster units, there's actually six points available in total. So gangbusters is back up to four. Yeah, there he's not maxed himself out of three. Yeah. Yeah. So apologies for that. You know, we're we work in with what information we're given, we just repeat it and then we realise it is right or wrong. We have to decide at that point. So there we go. So Gangbusters is maxed out. Um, so that is two for recon and one for old school. 
Um, so for attendance, you can check out all the players on BCP. Because uh, this event is being run through BCP. The Invitational wasn't yesterday, but this one is. So um, you can see all the plays and all the matchups. We have been told that Mohawk Miniatures has dropped out because he's not very well. Yeah, so the number one ranked is the ITC Knight player in the world. Yes, number one IT ranked player in the world for Imperial Knights has dropped out. Mm. Uh, over on table one, I can give you yep. a bit of an update now on I'll the shooting Gandhi. phase. Yeah, let's go to the table one. Let's have a look at the top um, down what's happening. What's so happening? the looters are... We're going to need a big F in the chat. F in the chat for the looters. The looters are gone. Yeah. Yep. Um, he did they, also they manage to... Fect. Good. Get it? Because Vect with an F. <sighs> <laughs> so the looters are dead over on that table. Yep. Um, two smasher guns are also dead. And all but one tractor cannon has died. Wow. So okay. chipping away certainly it is damage capability but boris has still got a lot of board control is still dominating that board still does yeah so the chapter cannons are the main threat against the fly so they were the target but the smasher guns are still really good so question how are the terrain features left and right with the two circles on being played so they're just being as played as like area terrain so if you're on it you get cover save so. well, we've just also toby's just been saying that if the uh the super smasher mega doom cannon yeah uh, goes super saiyan if it does a, if it has a really good turn it can shoot twice uh, so it could kill, it could kill two flyers. So it could. It can use more Daka, so he gets the hits on fives in Reddit rather than sixes. Because obviously orcs they always hit on sixes. Use more Daka to always hit on fives and generate extra shots. Get loads and then shoot twice. It's a crater, so it's low charge as well. So it's minus two to charge if you charge into it as well. If you yeah. touch it when you charge. Yeah, of course. So. So yeah, this is the side view. This is the orc swarm flying over. So the way they play the terrain is you have the two craters uh, with the two circles on them. Then you have six ruins. You have two L-shaped ruins and then four in the corners. And then the big boxy things where all the smasher guns are. And then just to the left with the green dice on top. They are hills. They are counting as hills today. So you can walk over them. You don't get covered from them. They're just there. They just exist in the nether as a hill. So Also, where's Boris's grots? Well, when we get an interview with Boris, we'll find out where all these grots are. <laughs> I, as I said, I think they're hiding just behind uh, the uh, mech guns. So you put the mech guns down and then all the grots sit down. The quick update from table one, we don't need to cut to it, but I can tell you that there's one orc boy sat in the middle of the table who just won't die. So the Rusty 17 haven't yep. been able to kill him. On table he's two. now kind of out of options, so now he's having to look about whether he's going to have to charge him with the shield captain Oof. in order just to kill that one boy. So he can't green tide him? No. Nope. Keep him alive in green tide. So well, also, Yeah, it's hiding on objective six, so it's um, it's just going to keep scoring that objective. Nice. Are they an inch away from his mech guns? Probably. <laughs> I'm not a TO, so if he hasn't got grots on the table, it's not my issue. As long as they're playing cool Warhammer and I get to talk about it, then we're all good. <laughs> I'm just here to bring you the hot gossip. That's my job. So I think we're going to get a quick update about table one. And it's going to tell us all about what's yeah, happening. Yeah, so Boris did manage to get a super smite off. Boy! So he's done six damage. Ouch! Into a flyer. Into a flyer, I believe, yeah. And so then... A, a um, flyer just got removed. So. so then the tractor cannon was used yeah. to destroy the plane. Okay. And obviously, because it's a tractor cannon, again, it's going to explode automatically because it's dead. So I believe they're just rolling for mortal wounds. Yeah, so Wave Serp is just taking some damage. Lots of mortal wounds everywhere. A couple of orcs have to take some damage. This is nasty. I'm really surprised by these orcs. Oh, yeah. More fool me. Yeah, I'm really quite... I'm really confused. <laughs> well, I'm just I don't saying, know what's trying, going on. <laughs> I'm trying to think, when have you played against orcs? Personally? Never. I've never you played. played against Neil once. I've played against Neil once. I remember playing against... Um, Two guys down at Warhammer World. Yeah, and you played they dressed up as pirates. I can't remember the name. One oh, yeah. Richard so we Brown. had Richard Brown and his friend. I can't remember his name now. But they were dressed as pirates playing orcs. Yeah. Um, and then you also played Dan, like not that long ago with White Scars as orcs. But this yes. is highly optimized orcs. This is There's why. Keep... Going, I've never played orcs. I've played them on the channel twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I, and this is why I keep telling Neil to buy Smasher Guns because yeah. they are just insane. And the Soup Top Shock Attack Gun is immense. Dan didn't even use you a Super Shocker Tan gun because he was like, oh, it's too good, I'm not bothered. Yeah. Typical Dan. I'm a narrative player, but I'm going to take best list at tournament. <laughs> um, quiz him, quiz him. So, shall I go and find out? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> uh, chat's the one really Toby's good. just yeah. pointed to there, the Super Shock attack gun has yeah. fired into that flyer. 
So it's the one basically that's closest to the duck. Okay, so look at top down so you can see that. So we're, we got a side view. Has he quacked it? <laughs> so the one to the right, uh, just just the side yeah, of the so chest the lock. The Super Mega Smasher Doom Cannon of Doom. Yeah. Uh, tractor Ooh, cannons are really only done good free in damage. this particular matchup, but not in every matchup. Only done free damage. Yeah. So Toby. it's not what he needs, not what he needs at all. Toby, we need some inside intel. Where are all Boris's grots for the mech guns? And then Elliot's going to answer. I mean, that's ah, Boris right, was just so shouting, oh my God, because I think we've all found him out. What we've what we've heard is that he doesn't really use, he's not sure if he's using grots because he can't use them for line of sight and distance. So he doesn't rate them that highly. Yeah, so it's interesting because of the way that it's, wo it's worded now. So they're just there as counters, essentially. Yep. But they still have to be placed, technically. Yeah. So, so there you go. They're supposed to be within an inch of the mech gun, but you d the, the mech gun, the grots can't be targeted. But the so you can see so that they're crimson on the just been okay. taken off. So they're definitely within an inch because they're stuck to the models. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Should I go and have a look personally? Yeah, you I'll go, go and have, have a look. Uh, in the meantime, that I think it was the a smasher gun has managed to finish off uh, that crimson hunter that we saw. So he's dead now, and. Uh, over on table two, they're just rounding up scores, it looks like. We'll have an update in a few minutes from them. So, not tons going on. The shooting going on in table one. Uh, I believe it looks like there's more artillery from the hill that's firing up on Military Hill. Whilst on table one, we've just got what looks like a lot of moot, a, uh, a lot of discussion and a lot of what, where are these points coming from as they're entered into the iPad. Yeah. So Boris is now doing everything he can on over here on table one. Um, he's trying to do everything he can basically to kill one of those planes. If he can't kill another plane this turn, it is going to be an interesting game. If he can kill one, I mean, we think Boris maybe have this one in the bag. Let's just see whether he can do enough. And there's a... Uh, I've come back. There's a shout of disbelief. I've come back with the hot goss about the grots. Um, so what we'll do, we'll cut to table two. But all the grots are so small, they can't be seen on camera. That's what's happened. So this is table two. This is Tom versus Lewis. Um, it's it's looking a little bit bleak for... Um, what was it that shot into the uh, looters? Looters? What shot at the looters? What shot into the looters, What Danny? shot at the looters? There you oh. go. Oh, yep. Because cool. the, uh, grots, the grots could fit on the buildings where they have the place, but they've just not actually placed them. So... Um, so, so, yeah, sorry about that, everyone. So just getting some updates from Table 2. Uh, so the Telemon has fired um, into the... It's killed a smasher gun and five yeah. boys. Uh, the Caladius fired into the looters. Now, we did roll two ones, so wow. two looters have died, uh, but six grots. Yeah. So just killing those grot shields. Nice. And then the, ca the, the shield captain's just charged. I think he rolled a double six for the charge because he clapped as he did it. Wow. I presume that was a double six. So oh, with the re-roll. With the re-roll. Very nice. So I made the charge there. So it looks like we're going to have a points update. Are you ready for it to all happen live? I'm so ready for <laughs> it to happen live. Boom, kill one, hold one. We have lots of very confused event staff walking around wondering what all these grown yes. men playing with little toy <laughs> soldiers are doing. It's having a great time, I think. It's absolutely having a great time. <laughs> So, if you're watching live at home, then let us know where you're from, where, where you're watching from. Thank you very much for tuning in today. We're going to be streaming all day for you guys, keeping you, bringing you all the hot gossip um, and all the action of the London Grand Tournament. 
Um, if you enjoy battle reports, make sure you check us out on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash Hellstone Wargaming. There's a little button down below. It mm. says, please subscribe. If you click it, it subscribes you. you was, it's essentially a channel that's just dedicated to me making a fool of myself. Pretty much. On the internet. For and I'm, I'm, I make the funny I just, edits. I just dress up. It's my if own like little reports personal and to laugh cosplay at the same channel. time. Dress up as a white scar. You did, didn't you? With well, I don't, I don't dress regal. up. There's normally just a piece yeah. of paper, a thematic piece of paper with a little drawing stuff <laughs> Low to budget memes. Which means that I turn into an entirely different person. Low budget spicy memes. Ah, so no one's getting hold more over on table two. He was able to kill that boy, so that means that they hold the same amount of objectives. Uh, Sarah watching in the UK, couldn't attend due to work commitments. That's a shame. Primark Seraphius. 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 <laughs> Kansas City. Uh, shout out from New Zealand. Hi, Adrian. How you doing? And then from Brizzy and loving it. Uh, subscribe to Hellstone Premium Flannels. You absolute babe. Hashtag please sub. Want to support the channel? Subscribe on hellstonewargaming.kdk. We do bat reports and you get discounts on all our merch. So, so we've got Kansas Chief and an all black. Hmm? Sports teams, Michael. Okay, sports teams. Cool. So, not you. You would know anything about that, you nerd. Which ta which table show we're gonna have a look at, Elliot? Are we happy on table two? Uh, I've not heard much about table two. Yeah, no. come to t let's go to table one. To table Toby one wants it's, us. It's, it's crucial movement phase time uh, for Boris. Trying to like looking at like he's trying to block out all of these flares. So we're the in the now. we're in the middle of the shooting phase. For table one. Oh, charge phase. It's a charge phase. He's just charging to the altar with the banshee mask. So as you can see, uh, the score ran up from last turn. It was 5-4 to Boris, which is super good. So he's charging into the Farseer and the Wave Serpent. Boy. Now Nick's appeared, which I'm guessing means he smashed his opponent. Nick, no, Nick, did Nick win his first game? He's gone. Yeah, he did. And what was the score? 38-9. to nine. So, so we think Nick that Boris is going to soft charge the Farseer and try and wrap it up. There you go. Nick Nanavati winning 38 to 9, playing one of his clients for the first game. So I believe he coached him into a loss, probably. That's probably what he did. <laughs> no, what he wants to do here is <laughs> <laughs> do this, and then I, I capitalize on that event, that mistake. And now you will learn. <laughs> Fire all, de declare all your guns at this this one lone brood brother. <laughs> yes. With your knights. Uh, so I don't know if you heard, Mikey, but Boris has gone for a soft charge. He's trying to wrap up that far save. Makes sense. A soft charge. The bad touch, as they call it. The bad touch. So bad touch is a, is where we um, say, basically what we mean is we charge something, don't really hit it, and then we wrap it around. Wrap around it. Give it a cuddle. And what that means is, is you can't leave combat, so the unit that wrap around it can't get shot, which is a weird mechanic, but it's super, super strong, and you use a lot in 40k, especially for a combat army. John's not looking now. The Scriver is looking mighty fine this morning. I'm doing hearts at him. He's not looking. He's not looking. I'll keep doing it until he looks. Notice us, Senpai. Notice us. I love you, Scrivo. He's walking around. I just told him I loved him, and now he's just like looking at me really confused. I'm say hello. I said, I love you. D John doesn't do microphones. Oh, he does. I do. Hello, John. Um, go Orcs. Yeah. We've yeah. got Orcs awesome on both tables. Yeah. How's okay. the uh, yeah? How's uh, the Skaven one? So it's like playing forty k, really. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Are they having a great time? I'm loving life. Yeah. I get to watch Elliot from afar. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're admiring your tables as well. So we got the lovely John, uh, lovely John. We got lovely Rob, and who's the other guy you're streaming with? James. 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 Yeah. So we got um, so they're streaming AOS today on twitchtv slash the Honest War Game. You've got to go check that out if you're bothered about that silly game, magic and monsters Sigma. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Joshua one one nine one. I was about to say it's just Skyrim, the tabletop game, but that'd be awesome. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not. I gonna believe say they're that. making a Skyrim miniatures game Don't as well. Say that. They are. I've seen the. They you know they're they're... just got a whole lot less room in my pants. <laughs> Do you know the guy off the cover? Do you know the the Dragonborn guy? The you Dragonborn, yeah. The, dra the you know the, the one. The Doverkin. Yeah, the one one off the cover. They made a miniature for that guy. Yeah. So. time. A full dragon army. Yeah. Parfenax represent. Yeah. Watching from Peterborough, UK. Way too many kids to get out of Tony. Seemed like a good idea at the time. 
<laughs> Everyone ever. <laughs> Boris is a lovely guy. He's a, he's a really good yeah. So, Boris is going in for that charge into the Wave Serpent now to tag that as well. Stops him counter charging with it, but also bubble wrapping that fast here. Mm, so the Farsa is dead, the boys have killed him. Oof. And now I think we're trying to see whether Boris can get greedy and get the Autark as well. Joshua has a long day of watching London GT, slash painting Grey Knight, slash and editing an essay. So not, not much to do today. It's a good job that we're going to be streaming for the next ten and a half hours. If there's any downtime, you could always send us the essay and we'll proofread it live We'll proofread it, yeah, we'll read it out to everybody. Depending on the topic, depending yeah. on the topic. <laughs> if it's about how good Hellstone Wargaming are and how everyone should subscribe on YouTube, then yes, we'll definitely do that. It's about the uh, the neediness of people who own private businesses in this world of capitalism. Yeah, death to capitalism, as Boris would say. Um, any dice left? We do have some dice left. Yeah, there's two, uh, two colours currently left. Not many, though, so you have to be quick. Most of them are now sold out. So it looks like we're just finalising the score at the end of that turn. Let's go to table one so we can see the score at the end of Boris's turn. He, Boris is going to get the bonus by the sound of it. Uh, it's an essay pr proving Elliot needs to be out of the shed more often. I don't agree. I actually, I don't think we will proofread that unless I'm correcting it. So, but Josh is going to take us up on proofreading the essay. So, um, so, so let us know. So over on table two, yeah. we're just wrapping up the shooting. Uh, we're just wrapping up the psychic phase and moving in to the psychic phase. Uh, sorry, the shooting, shooting phase. Yeah. Bleh, words, words Bleh. are very difficult. Right. Yeah. Um, so Warpath has gone off on those orange boys who are looking to get a blind charge off on the shield captain. Nice. nice. So that. So we'll, we'll the yellow. Do, we'll, sorry, it's the we'll yellow. We'll cut off. over to table two. I'll just quickly wrap up this table. So Boris has got kill one the whole one. He's, ma he's maxed out big game hunter and he's got recon and he's killed five units this turn. So Jordan has a lot of work to do. Lovely. So let's cut over to table two. Jordan has got a lot of work to do. A lot of work. To Josh do Death's turn. walking around, looking very, very happy and excited. So I'm assuming he's one as well. Um, so there we go. So we're going into the shooting phase for the Orcs for Tom versus Lewis against the Custodius. It looks like he's measuring some smasher guns against a Caladius. It's going to be big. Ooh, he's got loads. He's counting. He's counting. Lewis looks calm and collected, though. He's like, he's great. He's having a good time. So in the shooting phase, quickly in, in table two, he's looking to get the last five wounds off that Cal Caladius. Yep. Caladius. I've not decided how I want to say it yet. So Caladius. I'm just going to carry on saying oh, both. The Cali tank. That's what I started Cali calling tank. it. Yeah. The Cali tank, bro. Cali. Bro, yeah. get off my lawn. The great thing about the Cali tank is it doesn't have to go on a lawn because it hovers. So it's never interrupting lawn dirty. Lawn dirty. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so Warpath went off on those yellow boys who were looking for the blind charge in the psychic phase. There was also a smite went off on the Admech. He tried to use the stratagem to get back up, but it didn't happen. Nice. Nice, Ooh, so good. the first smasher gun has killed that Kali yeah, tank. that's the Kali, Kali tank has gone. So gone. we don't have to worry about the name of it anymore. No. Because it's gone. Oh, I, what just as I got really excited about calling it the, the Sorry, Kali Elliot, tank. What, what, which tank has been destroyed? The Kaladiator Kali tank. <laughs> the Kaladiator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Baconator tank. Um, any uh, word on Innis Wilson's game? I'm not sure, but you can keep track of all the scores on BCP. Cultural appropriation by GBD, GW established sci-fi tropes essay yep. title. Yeah, exactly. Economic analysis of tabletop miniature games in a digital age. That's also a good one. Hobo J, I've already told you, the grots are so small you can't see them on camera. <laughs> uh, those neoprene objectives may be on sale of health on phone. Potentially, dude. Potentially. We will see. So, uh, I need to have a word with our supplier because he was supposed to be delivering the objectives for this event. And he didn't. They have arrived at mine, and they're going to be at my house on Monday, which is the day I return Ooh, from the fantastic. LGT. <laughs> Isn't it always the way? Always um, the way. So just before I forget, which is a good song, uh, yeah. over on table two. Yeah. Now, the first smasher gun did really, really well to kill that Caladius. So that's good, right? The Caladiator. The Cali tank. <laughs> the bad thing is the looters could only really see the Cali tank. Oh, so, so they've now been they wasted. can't really shoot anything. Maybe so they should have jumped. misplayed. We should, probably should have fired. I say we. Um, he probably should have fired the looters at the Cali tank and yeah, then dedicate the smasher guns to all see that the telemon, the looters which just... the rest of the smasher guns are now doing, but the looters yeah. can't see the telemon. Yeah, so the looters um, are to the right of the smasher guns. The smasher guns have a great height. They can see basically anything on the board, unless it's in the L shape. Yeah. So, misplay. Misplay there. 
Well, what can you do? Not a lot, really. I love you too, Jay. Hobo Jay. So there you go. Just, just so many bodies with these orcs in. So, so many bodies. I do feel like Boris is just giving me the biggest thumbs up ever. I'll not say it too loud, but I think he's quite confident about this game, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think he had a really good turn there. Yeah. I mean, he managed to kill quite a few planes. He's just got to sit there now, hasn't he? As long or, as he doesn't do something stupid, this game should mm, be in the bag. I think so, yeah. I think so too. Not Grotgate. No Grotgate, that's what it is. I say, <laughs> Boris is an absolute legend. Drinks Village Gate. Owns Badman Cafe. Thanks again to Badman Cafe for sorting us out with this stream, making us able to do two tables at the same time. I love this setup. It's so it's so dynamic being able to swap between the two games. Yeah. Because obviously, in a game of Warhammer, it's not like a game of Call of Duty or FIFA where it's over in 15 minutes. Yeah. It's, it's something that's quite... There's interesting moments spread out between lots of movement. So... So yeah, no grot gate and not wearing smart clothes scan dog gate. <laughs> so the smasher gun has got um, strength 11. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realise the smasher gun could go on building. So for this event, there's t three types of terrain. We have the uh, flat things with the circles on. I'll, let's go top down so we can have a proper view. So we have the flat two pieces of terrain to the left and right, which are going to be counted as craters. We have the four buildings in the corner and the two buildings in the middle with the big L shapes. They are ruins. But then the other two big blocks aren't buildings. They are counted as hills. Reason being because the blocks they are avoiding the magic box rule. So they're counted as hills, so they don't provide any cover. Uh, they're just elevated. So, Which has caused interesting rulings in its own regard. It has. Very interesting. Check out Competitive 40k for all of that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it looks like just Tom's just clearing up with this. Got some Overwatch happening, I think. Uh, that's brilliant. Love the rules plus identical tables for this event. Yeah, I really like IDC. Tom just said, oh my golly Tell gosh. Tom is go gone. You said, oh my golly gosh. You so didn't he's just say done the three word. mortal wounds in addition to the eight gosh, wounds that it took because it. he failed both his saves. So the Telemont is gone. Uh, yeah, so I really like Ooh. ITC because it's a really balanced mode of play. You see, that 11 4K. damage. Oofed. So, looking thin on the ground now. I'm loving seeing Kali Tanks lose to Orcs. This is like my dream. Yeah, sorry. I'm loving seeing this Cali tank list lose to Orcs. Yeah. As much as I love custodies. Yeah. It's nice yeah, it's, just it's to see. not custodies. It's custodian soup. Oh, it's a soup. Custodies and everything. He's got. He's got the rush seventeen. He's not a real custodies player. It would count as Imperium in the ITC. So. Uh, is this the first LGT using ITC rules? I believe this, this is because it was using ETC last year. So. Uh, yeah, this is this is the first ITC-based LGT event, I believe. Cannot confirm, but I'm pretty sure. Educated guess. Uh, LTSA LGT was sponsored by on the BCP, and today all the lists are hidden again. Oh, that's a real shame. <laughs> so on table one. Well, I could see I could see the list, and I but I subscribe, I believe. So Jordan's. Yeah, sure. um... Shall we go to table one and have a look? <laughs> yeah, so Jordan forgot to move a plane and moved into his shooting phase. The one that Toby's just been pointing at. Can you point it again, sorry? Which one? This one. That one there. <laughs> <laughs> Boris, just whack it off the table. <laughs> You've done. I think You've Boris done now. <laughs> has very kindly allowed him to go back and move it. <laughs> Jordan's just laughing. I think it's a very nervous laugh of, oh my god, I can't oh, believe I did that. <laughs> and it, that's a, is that a Crimson Hunter X arc as well? Is that an X arc, Toby? No. No, no okay. I don't think it is. Ty winning, how you doing, bro? But you're a millionaire. Uh, all them subscribing when it. Oh, of course, yeah. Millionaire. What time? That's why I still got a day job. <laughs> Back to work on Tuesday. Um, so welcome, Ty winning. Obviously, sporting the Roblin uh, emotes there. So make sure you go and check out twitch.tv slash the Honest War Game if you want to see the hot um, Age right of Sigmar there. action. They're right there. They look right beautiful. There. there they are. You see, so, Rob. Rob's not on camera now, so we'll give him a break. I'm sure he's been talking all day about AOS. Their games have finished, though, and ours haven't. So there you go. Are you guys okay? <laughs> My reporter's looking very excited out there. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to get a big update from Tank soon as well to find out all about what's happening the rest of the 40k event. <laughs> 
So, so what, what I've been told is because there's not there's a bit of downtime on the 240k tables at the moment. That uh, Dan was showing Toby how to squat. Ah, okay. But I think Toby was just using that as an opportunity to look Dan. at his glutimus <laughs> maximus. There we go. <laughs> Six a.m. in New England and up for the LGT with you guys. Well, I appreciate it, Ty winning. Thank you very much for tuning in. The new camera view is good. <clears throat> Yeah, so we've, we had to adjust the camera because one got knocked yesterday and it actually turned out to be a better view than yesterday. So there you go. Uh, we're trying our best to just trying to keep it fresh by moving around so you can see multiple views. <coughs> so that's the great thing. Again, because we're out really, uh, Bad Moon helped us out with a bit of an investment into the channel. Um, only problem is a bit crotch photo because it is, yeah. So it's, that's a difficult thing. Without having 9 million cameras, we're only going to be able to have two views because we are limited by capacity of my computer. So in 202, they we follow. Um, so we're trying to get a good view for both of you, for all of you from both angles. So I'm trying to flip between. So this is like a good top-down view and then they are all, all rolling dice in the same place. So if I cut to the other view, it's a little bit crotchy, but you can see the dice. So... Crotch view. I'll change it to crotch view on OBS. So just while we're here, 54 scatter bike shots have just gone into the unit of pink boys. Yep, the ones that uh, are just near the flyers. Five died from 54 500 shots. died. Five. 50 died. Five. Five died. 0 0.5. <laughs> five, yeah. So, only five boys have died wow, from all it? those okay. scatter bike shots. That's, that is unlucky. That's very unlucky. Jordan is not having the game that he wants. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, and also while we're here, so at the moment... Shall we go to table two? Do you want to tell us see what's happening? Yeah. I keep forgetting people's names, that's all. Lewis, Lewis and Tom. Lewis is the uh, custodius player. Custodius player. So we're going to find out what's happening. Let's look at the top down. So Tom's only killed three this turn. Oh, kill three. So he's killed three units. Sure. Yep. Okay. So he managed to kill, clear off those Skitari on the hill. I think he left one guy alive in the, the Skitari Rangers, yeah. there. Um, he fired the rest of the shot. So he split fired. I believe it was the looters. Oh, he's elected not to charge the shield captain as well with those warpath boys. Yeah, um, just leave them. But yeah, just basically he's done, he just kill it, cleared off a lot of things off, off objectives. Yeah. See, Tom's not too worried if the shield captain does charge him because he's going to go for some smasher guns, but then the smasher guns will just pull out and then he'll just shoot them, shoot the shield captain. So He's allowing the shield captain to come to yeah. him. I believe they've moved into the custodian's movement phase now. Yeah. What list are you excited to see, boys? Uh, well, there's loads of interesting lists. So there's one we've seen for the next game. It includes 70 or 80 intercessive or primaris bodies. So we'll be able to get that one on the next game, which is super cool. But if there's any list that you can see on BCP that you want on the stream, then do let us know. So pulling out is always the best option. Exactly. Or you have problems that uh, someone else said about having kids and not being able to go to events. very smart, Mark. Very smart. So. so it doesn't look like Lewis has a lot left at the, end of this, at the start of this turn. It looks like he's got... Uh, a couple of characters and the shield captain and a couple of rangers. That be that's an interesting because we have a, we have a little bit of time after this stream. Obviously, all the players have to go for dinner, yeah. um, so we do have time for if people want to request if they see some cool matchups if people yeah. want to get on BCP. Chris Frozen is here. He's playing Necrons. He has a super super nice Necron army. We might get mm, him on next. I'd like to have Necrons on. Yeah, we've not I seen Necrons Chris. yet. This Chris is weekend. a legend. Dinosis has obviously been watching all day yesterday. Yeah, super it's a super support. So a bit we'll try and get Chris on next. If he wins. We need Par Highlander on stream. We did have an interview with Par yesterday. Um, any new Space Marine list? I think probably 90% of the event is a new Space Marine list. Anything Knight related will get my vote or Grey Knights. Um, well, I think Grey Knights are against uh, Eldar Flyer list first. So, unless they pulled out the impossible, I don't think they will have won that game, so. So we're gonna try and keep on, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do like top tables all day, because all the same people on. Um, but we'll be trying to keep interesting lists coming through, so. There's gonna be so many, there's gonna be like 200 winners after this event, so we're gonna have a, a big pool to play with. <clears throat> I'd like to see New Marines 2 versus anything nice to paint. Well, yeah, we've got some interesting lists to be able to uh, choose from, so we're going to be able to Mike pull those Mike Porter's up. here at the moment as well. Mike Porter, yeah. yeah. He's uh, big in the ITC last year, number one in the UK. I believe he's using his Imperial suit oh, that he's he using. Number one in the world at one point. So, 
I think Tank's ready to do an update for us, actually. Yeah, he's on update, friends. So we're going to chat to Tank. He's going to give us a full, up full update. Uh, and he's going to chat to Nick Nanavati of Knights at the Game Table. And that's coming up next. Morning, everyone. Um, just an update from the floor for you again. Um, I've got a, an update friend with me. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, um, so I've, I'm not going to go over, as I told you, some of the games were a real blowout, like uh, Anthony Chu and Mike Porter, Reese Robbins. So I'm not going to go over the ones that I told you were being a blowout. Um, in Simon Pritis's Simon Pritis with his tower against uh, Lee Hall with like the Eldari super shooty flyer spam list. I told you Simon was uh, was a bit concerned and because Lee had a really good start and uh, good board position, but Simon sort of had a good second shooting phase and it's looking it's swinging more in Simon's favour now and looking more favourable for the Tau. Uh, he had a five point lead lead when I left the table. Uh, the Comrade Barkowitz, uh, he's. His game with Simon Edwards is pretty much done now. He's going to table him. Uh, they were just sort of playing out the last few turns and, and killing the last few things just for fun. Um, the really interesting James Ram Ramsey list with the 60 intercessors. Uh, it's, it seems to be, it's a very close game on points. Um, because James Ramsey's not got much anti-tank, either combat or shooting, he's essentially got an army full of bolters and sniper rifles. He's struggling to, to actually get through the knights, and one of them's badly wounded, but none have died yet. So I think he's going to struggle there, but he's a very good player. So it'd be interesting to see what he can pull out there. Uh, we've picked out a couple more interesting games, which we've just seen for you. Um, Ace Face is running Carnifex spam against uh, Tom Truman's guard. Uh, apparently that one's close on points, uh, but Ace told me that it, he's starting to turn a corner and uh, the Carnifex spam are looking good for the win. So, But it's still close, so we'll see how that one goes. And um, just checked in on uh, Dan Bates with his uh, White Scars uh, sort of Gladius style five drop pod list. Uh, he's playing against uh, Mattis Mentnik, who's got uh, Guard and Dark Angels using the uh, the Azrael and the Talon Master sort of character land speeders, which uh, they were telling me are a really good tool for killing killing other Marines. Uh, Mattis gave Dan first turn, which he didn't want. So Dan's kind of uh, waited for third turn till his combat doctrine kicked in and he's, he's kind of dropped all his drop pods into the middle of the board. Mattis had a shooting phase at him and they were saying the game would hinge on if, if Mattis could, uh, could kill enough of the drop pod contents that Dan couldn't get to him and uh, do damage back and their consensus was that Mattis hadn't killed enough and it's, it's super close but uh, Dan maybe has a slight edge but we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Nick, do you want to tell us about your game? I was giving them a bit of a yeah. an insight. Uh, my game was pretty pretty easy compared to yesterday's games in the Invitational. I was playing against a young kid. He's like 13 years old. I think he's his first GT, so I was trying to help him along, show him some ropes. Uh, he's playing knights. He made the mistake about flinking one of his knights, so I showed him what it's like to play Gene Steeler Colt when they block the, every board edge. So I made it so his knight couldn't actually come onto the board, so the auto was destroyed at the end of turn three. Um, but yeah, it was just a total blowout. It was a, it was a good game though. Yeah, um, we've been having a bit of a, uh, just a walk around the tables as people are finishing up the round one. Um, we, we did say that we've seen a lot of interesting and varied marine things. Is there anything you've seen that's really caught your eye? I just, everyone's list is so different. It's, I mean, I don't know what's good yet out of whose list work because it's still round one, but you're seeing drop pods by Dan, you're seeing Reese's white scarf, Brigade, um, Ramsey's playing pure intercessors. Like, there's so many different variations to Marines. It's crazy. So, this is very new. Most people, when a book comes out, they kind of have the same idea of what's good. Uh, clearly, with Marines, everyone's running everything. So, we'll just see what shakes out. Yeah. Cheers, Nick. We'll uh, send you back to Mikey and Elliot.
I, I'll do it, you can just tell me. There we go, thank you very much to Nick Nanavati and Tank for that awesome update from the rest of the event. Absolute legend. Nick, are you feeling well? Are you well? Oh, great. That's good, that's good. So we are live at the London 40k Grand Tournament. Uh, this is table two, this is Tom versus Lewis. We've just ended the turn, it's currently 17-11. Going into Tom says, do you want to tell me a quick update about what happened in the yeah, end, so end of that we, turn? Yeah, we had that, we had that uh, shield captain that was only on one wound. Now, per the new fly rules, he was able to get over the screen and get into the smasher guns. But he did allow, uh, he didn't allow enough room, so the war boss was able to heroically intervene. Oof. Now the war boss struck first. Yeah. He swung at the shield captain with his killer claw, and now he, he failed his invulns as well. So those wounds went through. Uh -huh. Two wounds. So he failed. He had three wounds on him. He's failed two of the invulns. Yeah. He used his blood game victor. Victor of the blood games. Victor of the blood re games. Uh, Reroll to get one of them, and use the CP reroll for the other one. Wow, so he's still alive on one wound. Amazing, amazing. So there you go. That was super good. Just to just be one. Oh, Nick he Nanavati has failed to kill a single. Sm he's not even killed the smashing gun that shield captain. Okay. So he's a tough boy. Just can't do the damage. Okay. So he can survive, but he can't live. He can't kill anything. So, so he didn't get a single kill. So no kill for Lewis that turn. Now everyone who just insulted Nick and said fancy doing that to a thirty-year-old kid, he's just come over to have a look. <laughs> he knows he's watching you now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He has he has a great story now. He yeah. played Nick N at LGT. Yeah, and I think uh, it was one of his was one of his coaching uh, clients. And so. Nick Nick isn't the sort of guy that will just sort of power game you and absolutely smash you. If if he can see that you're struggling and he's going to beat yeah. you easily, he'll coach you and give you little tips and stuff as well. Yeah. But it is a tournament. It will let you win. It won't let you obviously win, but you know. But it'll, it'll, you'll learn a lot from a player like that. We've seen such high level play from him yesterday. It was just insane. So, how are you feeling? I was distracted then. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Nice. Uh, so, shall we cut to table one? Let's go and have a look at table one, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so this is table one. This is Boris Michev of Badman Cafe versus Jordan Clifford. We just had another flat plane removed, and I think Toby's going to tell us all about what's happened. Smash the kid is the only way we'll learn. Exactly. Yeah. So Jordan's last turn, he was only actually able to kill one smasher gun, so he only got kill one for his primaries. I don't think he's been able to score any secondaries, so Jordan's not been able to do enough this game. No, I think he's just had Butcher's Bill, and that's it. Yeah. So. Just one butcher's bill. Yeah. So the score is currently 10-4. Um, I'm not really sure whereabouts we are in the turn, but we're about to find out. So there's a wave serpent, a warlock, and bite. There's one just flyer. not a lot left at all. There's some scout bikes. Boris has just got the rest of the board. Uh, I should say that... Um, Jordan the has only got two wounds left as well. Oof. Jordan has had some Storm Guardians in the top left, so he's probably won this game. Yeah. <laughs> Storm Guardians are going to come here and do work. This game is done. I think probably both games are about done, to be honest. Yeah. Just waiting. Crazy. Uh, I think we were spoiled yesterday doing the Invitational. Most of them games went down to the wire. Yeah. We were very, very close. All the lists were of a very, very similar standard. Yeah. Um, it all pretty much came down to the pilots. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Whereas these games, obviously, you've got a, it's the, random matchups for starting. Yeah, and the quality, the quality of list is all is quite varying as well. Yeah. Uh, not in terms of like how nice they look, because all the armies are beautiful, especially the ones that we bring up on stream. We tend to get nice, yeah, nicer armies. But in terms of whether they're the most competitive lists, uh -huh. no, they're not. They're not. Some of them will be. I mean, these two arc armies are performing well. Cali tanks are really, really good. Yeah. Elder Elder flyers are very, very good. Good. But are they the best, like the absolute min-max yeah. optimum lists? Probably not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas in the Invitational, you tend to get very strong lists. So that's why those games went for like pretty much the full three hours. Mostly. Yeah, it's, this is true. Exactly. So maybe we'll see some early wrap-ups today. I mean, there were some so. upsets yesterday in games that didn't go to full time, such as um, the Comrade and George game. Yeah, just exactly. before was, the that end, really yeah, quick. that was one that, that was just, actually just called about roll. an hour. Yeah, um, those dice rolls, weren't they? That was the, the vast issue. majority of them are... Yeah. Um, been good. Uh, not sure if possible, but I would love to see Reese Robbins and his White Scars Brigade on stream. We actually had Reese Robbins game one yesterday. Yeah. Uh, this is Ace Face. Yeah, uh, that was so a fantastic game. Reese is such a good guy to have on the stream. 
Uh, if there's anyone who's in the event and you'd like some updates from them, um, then we can uh, hopefully get them on stream. Par Highlander or get some seems to be a, a fan favourite. Everyone seems to like Par Highlander. He does have a cool moustache, to be fair. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, so maybe we'll be able to get Reese on again. He's a super cool guy. He was super I'd like really to nice. have Reese on again. I really yeah, like so him. So we'll see what his matchup's next. I want to be Reese. There's strange. so many people who want to get on stream. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Reese. So there you go. So we'll see what what we're doing. And um, also the armies. I thought the army was rubbish. Which are the white scars one? Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Like to the to the uninitiated such as me, I looked game. at that list and thought, that's that's why has he brought that to this invitational? And then he smashed Ace. And then he smashed Ace. And he won like, his second game as well, I think. Oh, my word. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Um, that's fine, though. I think the nice thing about Big Tony Stream, the weird and wonderful at the start, and then the pro stuff at the end. It's what the hobby is all about. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll see if we can get Reese on next. Um, well, but the thing is, we've got a lot of choice. We don't want to keep bringing the same people the on all the time. It's the choice, isn't it? Yeah. There's, yeah. there's, too, there's, there's too many. 200 potential people to come on the event on the stream. So out of 200, that's um, 200 people with wins. Uh, so that'd be 100 games you can choose from. Wow. So we can look over two of the 98. Over uh, on table two, the, the looters have just jumped for their second time. So we're going to see where they're going to go. Let's go and have a look where they are now. As you can see them there, he's just shuffling them around. Uh, the Mario Kart games are different lists. Once you, get, uh, you get the same list by different people. True, we did have quite a variation in the invitation, which is nice. We did have a couple of genes in the cults, but they were varied lists, which is cool. Uh, how's Dino doing? I can probably. F Tank's going to do the couple, the first update. Uh, Tank's <laughs> going to do the first update, um, but um, we'll have to send him on a wild goose chase for the next one. Everyone's uh, everyone's fallen back from the shield captain to allow them to open up into the shield captain. Yep. So fall back, shoot all of the sluggers because there's so many. Uh, so many um, uh, just look at shots coming in. <laughs> it's all fun and games here down at the LGT. We're just all having a great time. Lewis and Tom are having a great time. Like Tom is very focused on rolling dice quickly because obviously he's an auto player. He's still got le he's got like 30, 33 minutes left on the clock, so he's having a great time. Uh, but he's got loads of dice to roll. He's got a, a particular dice curl that has been mentioned. Uh, but Lewis looks calm and collected, like a true custodian. Hmm. Nothing's, compare, compare nothing's to, phasing him. Compared to Boris and Jordan, they're both laughing. So they're both having a great time. Jordan's like, I've just rolled 54 dice and killed four models. Why did that happen? And Boris is like, I don't know, but I'm happy it did. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, oh. two very uh, interesting games. Very, very good. Brilliant first games again for round one of the main tournament. But we're streaming four games today. Looks like we're going uh, for a double orc victory. Yeah, it does look like never say. orc green tide or overrun in both of these games. What's the biggest difference between a competitive game and a pickup game? Point. Um, I think the main difference is is the type of list that you're going to play. In a competitive event, you're going to play some of the most brutal, ridiculous um, lists that you can see, that you can find. In the most case, you might get some random ones, uh, which are just nicely painted, but you're going to get the most brutal list most of the time. Um, and also, sometimes if you make a mistake, then you can't really go back and fix it. Um, it'll just, if it's a mis if you made a mistake, the opponent will just capitalize on it. The point of a top competitive game is to not make the mistakes. Selfie time. <coughs> um, did Tom Layton bring his crystals? No, he's not brought, brought his crystals today. He's using uh, Knights, Thunderfire Cannons, and Admeg. We actually had that on stream yesterday, game one as well. According to BCP, Jamartin slaughtered Beth Taylor. Well, there you go. Jamartin's using Knight, uh, Chaos Knights and Lord Discordance. It's a cool list. I really like them, them Knights. I think I'm biased, though, because the Death Guard colours. So yeah. It's like Death Guard Legion colours. It's like the, the like the creamy grey colour with the, with the Death Guard green. Oh, I love that colour scheme. Yeah, oh, exactly. God damn it. <laughs> so what we'll do is when Tank comes back, does an update, we'll send him off to find some more players and see what we can do. I think he's currently trying to hunt down the Highlander. The Highlander. There could only be one. There can be only one part Highlander. That mustache is insane, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. proper good. Proper good. I feel like I have to salute him when he, when I yeah. see him. Yeah. 
I wonder what, I wonder, like, there is, like, two big lights on these players, but I wonder if they're enjoying playing out of the way of the main event. Because there's so many people here, it must be a, a bit of a, a bit sweaty down in the sweat box of 400 players, uh, all in one event. But it's maybe they're out of the atmosphere, I don't know, it's a weird one, weird one. So we're going to get an update about table two. Let's go for a side view. So, we can so see. they're still trying to... Basically, everything's shooting into the shield captain. The shield now, captain did, on the hill. He did fail a wound and used his uh, Victor of the Blood Games reroll to reroll that again. Nice. Uh, so he still does have his CP reroll mm -hmm. as normal. Obviously, he's trying to kill the shield captain. Yeah. Shield captain's tanking it by the looks of it. What a lad. He's, he's not able to do enough. I think there was a CP used there by Tom to right. So the smash, right? Okay. So the smasher guns are firing into the shield captain. Okay. So it looks like Lewis has a ranger on on objective two, the shield captain in the on the hill, and then another character in the top right. <laughs> and that's it. Which one? Yeah. Oh, he's got another ranger as well, a sniper in the middle. So, just to confirm from Danny, if you can get confirmation. So, Lewis has three characters and one ranger with a sniper rifle left. Oh, yeah, there's another unit of rangers next to objective one. So, that's all he has left. Thank you, mate. So, yeah. So, one, two, three, four, five, six models. Six models left. So, I, I presume he's just going to try and kill the shield captain, then the rangers will be super easy to kill. But the shield captain's the worst one to try and kill because he's so tough. So, it does like he's just made his saves again. Lewis just clapped and did a dab. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a handshake there. Yeah. I presume that was a shield well done handshake. The shield captain has lived. <laughs> that wasn't the end of the game handshake, that was just a well done handshake. <laughs> He's just trying to look. He's like, how many guns do I have left and how many can target the shield captain? And I think the answer is zero. Are you shaking your head? Oh, um, so there's Admech over there, who's the last one in the unit. Yeah. Uh, he rolled a six, but it was cocked. So he re rolled it and got another six. And there was a handshake and a well done for, for it over there. <laughs> is that what's the side of the game? Oh, no, the game's, the, the state game's still oh, okay. all to play for. So. Yeah, so just a couple of characters left to kill and then some rangers. And that's it. That's all he's got left. The shield captain is probably the hardest thing to kill on the border right now. We've got a ranger character that's my, uh, not a Skitari character right at the top right, but he's not really doing anything at this point. So. I don't know what Beth's using. Do you know what Beth's using? Um, I believe she's using Admech. Or she's using People Admech or Jakari. solid, but... Yeah. Against knights and blood discordance in, when you're playing Imperium. If you're yeah, playing those Ad, discordance you're playing are insane. Yeah, playing Admech this week. Yeah, weekend. Admech. So the flawless host ones get three extra attacks for every like four plus if you get all the powers off, which is ridiculous. Tom looks stressed because he can't kill a single character. <laughs> so he's just used his CP reroll. So Tom's out yeah, of CP to save now. that shield captain. That shield captain is still doing it. I think he's taking the entire Orc army to the face. I think, I think that shield it. captain one just, just run shield in. Captain. <laughs> he keeps coming back from like the point of death, using a reroll to get his invuln back. Oh, yeah, sure. Why are placing him? This is stupid. Yeah, love the show you follow, guys, especially the fact that you have multiple tables being streamed. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much max max capacity. We're at max capacity um, for in terms of streaming. We have six cameras on the go. All I need now is a couple more laptops, a couple more cameras, and we can do more. Yeah. So if anyone wants to donate a spare laptop, that'd be great. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you never come to America to stream. Oh. I have three cameras all under the cars. So. Well, there you go. Nick Narvaez just offered to come straight for us to um, use his equipment in the US. So any US events want to hire us and let us know. <laughs> we'll come, come hang out with Nick. Have a great time. Uh, yeah, she's, uh, Beth using Amec and Crusader Knight. So... I believe this is uh, a unit of old boys charging into two rangers, which is going to probably get um, yeah. Tom the bonus at this point as well. Yeah. So that's what he's going for. Yeah. At this Charge point, the rangers these and games then pile in. are quite well decided. I think this is probably a foregone conclusion. 
Ah, uh, okay. So he's not on the middle objective. He's not on objective six. So he's not able to get the bonus. Okay. My apologies. So he's on four objectives, not five. Yeah. Yeah, he's on the four. Still good, though. Still four of the still six objectives. Still good, yeah. Still, still good position, but not enough to get the bonus. Jordan's doing lots of precise movement over on table one, it looks like. <laughs> Nick is the true freelancer 40k hero we need but don't deserve. <laughs> <laughs> I got another Tinder match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so also on this 40k coverage, not only do you get the full coverage of the event, you also get the full coverage of uh, Nick Nanavati's Tinder success. And he's got two <laughs> matches so far. So, I query, thank you very much for follow. Well, welcome to the stream. How are you? Um, so shall we shall we cut over whilst this charge is happening? I think it's decided that the Rangers are going to die. Yeah. So what we're going to cut over to there. table one and have a look what's happening. Well, Lewis does seem to be able to tank stuff down here now. So it looks like Boris is methodically just stringing everything out. So can we get an update of what uh, Jordan has left, Toby? It looks like he's got a cup, a flyer, a wave serpent. And Tell a me, Toby, bikes. what does he have? So. <laughs> I'm not going to... Not a lot. <laughs> not the rough lot, translation is not a lot. <laughs> is left. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. So he's got a couple so of rangers. Guardians of Wave Skirpent, Scatter Bikes and a Wave Skirpent? Wave Skirpent. <laughs> wave Skirpent. Some Wave Skirpent's left are. <laughs> yeah, so not a lot left in Jordan's uh, corner. You see these... Uh... Oh, he just kicked the camera just as I changed onto it. <laughs> Yeah, so apparently both both players have agreed that the game's ended. They're just trying to they're just play working out points. I mean, that's the same for both tables at this point. I yeah, think it's quite it's quite decided that Tom's won this one. Yeah, and Boris has also won this one. So they were very low score on this table, though only ten four. But you know, it's still early in the game. Yeah, and Boris is swarming the board. So. So now we're just trying to hold on for those points. Hmm. I want to say that massive thank you to everyone who's tuned in this weekend. It's been super cool of you so far. We've got another three games today, and then uh, another th um, three games today, and then two more um, after this. Yeah, we are using ITC Battles. We've been speaking to the uh, developer, so we have uh, Toby and Danny doing all the scores on their iPad and keep a chat with the players, and then it updates for you live on screen. So, so loads and loads and loads of browser sources and cropping. <laughs> So we do have a bit of a moment happening on table two. Table that two. was the sound of the wah and not me needing to go to the bathroom. It sounded like both. Uh, so there's 59 <laughs> attacks coming in on that shield captain. The shield captain has been an absolute mad lad for most of this game. He's been tanking those saves. Well, 59 attacks. I don't think Into he can do that. Into the bike one in the bottom. I don't think he can do yeah. that. Shield captain on bike. Saying that though, we had 54 scatter bike shots that only killed five boys over there. Yeah, so I mean, what could happen this game? Yeah. Yeah, very weird. Very, very weird. Ooh. So, I couldn't tell whether Toby was staring into my soul or, into or whether space. he just zoned out. <laughs> I think it was the second. <laughs> I think both. Watching all these orcs move around and just chill. I'll just let him stare at Scrivo for a bit. Yeah. Scrivo's taking the heat now. Scrivo's over here. He's having a great time. I say, if you want to check out some um, AOS content this weekend, make sure you check out twitch.tv slash The Honest Wargamer. I'm sorry, Danny. Can you just repeat that? Because I'm not sure whether I heard you correctly. Oh, Tom's got his little measuring stick out. So he can measure three inches uh, for the movement. <laughs> so we just talked about the shield captain, the shield captain of dreams. Yeah. 59 attacks. How many wounds do you reckon he did, Mikey? Bearing in mind, the shield captain is on one wound. I reckon he did like five wounds. <laughs> Six wounds. 60 wounds. I don't know. Not many. And I think he probably saved them all because he's still on the board. <laughs> he took one wound. <laughs> and then he saved it. But there's a correction. He had three wounds left. Oh, right. Okay. So he's not dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 so there's a shield captain on two wounds there's two rangers that are about to get butchered on, on objective one ah. right so apparently where the confusions come from is there's lots of dice are down for like the smasher guns and stuff so uh, we yeah uh, we are making them use bad moon cafe dice thank you to bad moon to helping make this stream possible we have the bad moon himself on the street on table one 59 attacks 59 attacks one wound dealing one wound gg gg 
Toughness 6 versus Praetors and Shield Captains. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah so naturally it's Toughness 5, so obviously yeah. on a bike you usually get plus 1 bike Toughness. Bike plus 1 versus so Toughness 6. Uh, the Orcs would be strength 5 on the charge there, I think. With, uh, no, I don't think I have a banner, so it'd be like 5 to wound. So. 5 to wound. Freeze to hit in combat Orcs. Oh, it looks like he's done. He's, he's killed through. the Rangers. So he can kill something, unless it's wearing gold. Yeah, gold's so. just too shiny for the Orcs. Yeah. They're just distracted. Oh, yeah. this. Threes and threes against Katari. Yeah. It's threes and threes against because Katari absolutely butchering threes them. Threes and fives against yeah. the I said Tommy's using a, a version of the Whappy Stick we don't sell, but we do sell Whappy Sticks like that if you want to buy one on HealthSoulWalking.kk slash shop. <laughs> Hashtag plug that shit. <laughs> There's a link in the description if you want to buy some merchandise. Also, I have no shame. <laughs> so, I said... Lewis doesn't have a lot left. They're just doing the final scores of this turn. I should probably get the score screen up on just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Crivo. Crivo sat next to us doing that. What a legend. Uh, see you later, NJ. 40k, Dad. Catch you later. We're going to be streaming all day. Are oh, we going to have a tank update soon? So Tank went off to find the people you requested to find out what they're doing. Yeah. So as soon as he comes back, we will have an update. I'm sure it'll be soon. It is an athletic centre. I think he's done about 17 laps today. So... <laughs> so they're just doing the final score for this turn tank shorts are on mighty yeah we do have a sponsored by silky's cam good thing tank is in great shape exactly that's why tank's doing it he, he did crossfit competition at this event at this uh, venue once so uh, which is really funny so, so it looks like Tom's on 20 to 11 now kill one hold one maxed out gangbusters maxed out recon and one old school for probably for first strike no warlord yet because he can't kill that with two wound shield captain so there you go <laughs> tank shots are mighty yes indeed so apparently there's a not a great situation going on with food at the moment I've heard Okay. My roving reporters. Oh. Apparently there are very, very long queues. Ah, okay. There's a lot of people here this weekend. So I'm 400 people, yeah. 400 Hard people. Hard to cater in, for 400 people at the best of time. the 40k event. Yeah. The one main open, so I'm sure I'll get sorted. So here we are on table one. Boris absolutely dominating the field right now. Dominating the battlefield. <laughs> Tom looks like he's having a great time. Lewis, again, calm, steady, but looks like he's also having a great time. But Boris and Jordan on this table, Eldar Flyers versus Orcs. Um, it looks like we're just kind of clearing up this turn now. Tank is a peak Tau player, join the greater good, get swole. Exactly. So it looks like just some couple more of the scatter bikes getting taken off. But Boris is kind of pulling ahead with the points at the minute. So let's see what how Jordan retaliates with so little on the board. So if you get an up, a bit of an update from table um, two, we'll move over and have a look. Is there much happening? The, yeah, so shield captain's all about shooting some grots. Because there's some grots at the back of the field. Okay. Okay, so the shield captain's come out of combat at the bottom, the, the shield captain on bike, uh, killed six grots, and then not a lot else has happened with the sniper rifles. But we're going to get an update from Tank. He's going to be interviewing Mike Porter. I think 
Tank's going to interview Mike Porter. How and gorgeous then is Tank? It's just so pretty. He's so red. And Rufio Cyber's here. How are you doing? You all right? <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. I just joined you for a minute. You've been spooning AOS today. Just, is it just, going okay? Yeah, it's been going great. Love a bit yeah. of Age of Sigma. Yeah, so if you yeah. want to check out some AOS content from the LGT, make sure you check out twitch.tv slash the honest world. Oh, thanks, game. babe. Yeah, yeah. So, go to the, Tank. Yeah, so let's go to Tank and where he interviews oh. Mike. Hello, everyone. Uh, probably the, the last update of this round. Um, and I've got another sort of 40k big deal, Mike Porter with me of uh, England, Ooh, England, lovely man. England, another England ETC player, world champion. Yeah, yeah got, got two of them for you now. We'll see if we can get them all this weekend. Uh, so just some uh, some updates from what's going on. Um, first time we've checked in with him today, but Tom Layton had an easy win against Jordan Penning's Imperial Fists. Uh, Apparently, Jordan got unlucky with the uh, how many sixes he rolled on the Mortal Wounds strat that the Fists have, and uh, Tom's just rolled in with his Knights and Thunderfire cannons. Uh, James McKenzie had an easy win against James Pilkington's Imperial Soup. He had a bit of a, a Maliki style efficient mech shooty list, and uh, but James did his janky GSC thing that he does and uh, came out with a 36 11 win. Uh, Simon Pridis, his game's really touch and go against uh, Lee Hall. That's a uh, Tau versus sort of Eldari, both very shooty lists. <laughs> um, so Simon has the board and Simon has more firepower left. Lee only has like some Venoms and a few Cabalites left, but he does have a five point lead. So that one's going to go right down to the wire. So that'd be fun. Um, Ace Face is in a real... Uh, street fight with Tom Truman. Ace Face has got the Carnifex spam. Tom Truman's got some Space Marines, just Space Marine characters with guard, really. The, um, the Ace Face is five points behind. The game, they were saying, there's a Smash Captain in the middle of the table. Ace Face is trying to kill him because the, the Smash Captain's the only thing that Tom has left that can deal with his Carnifexes. So uh, the last two turns will, will kind of hinge on that, really. And um, I didn't want to sort of ask the players what was going on because uh, they looked like they were in the zone and uh, a bit stressy. But James Ramsey with that really cool um, sort of 80 Primaris Marine list. But it's it's not tooled for knights. He's, play knight. he's playing four knights. And uh, when I went to the table, there were about 50 of the 80 Primaris Marines dead. He had 30 left and all four knights still there. Wow. Wow. So, so that's going bad. it looks it looked on the score sheet like the points were quite close. Yeah, but he's getting hold, hold more, but he's not getting any kills there, is yeah, he? Yeah, and the knights had good table position and yeah. Ramsey, come on, man. Yeah. But uh, would you like to tell us about your game? I know it was a bit of a blowout, but yeah, there were some interesting parts when that you took the mic, mate. All right. Uh, so I played I played pure grey knights. Um, which was which was a nice little uh, start to the tournament. Um, he had sort of um, a couple of razor backs. He had some uh, strike squads, and he had a dread knight, and he had this land raider with crow and ten of the jump pack dudes in. So uh, I launched the smash captain over turn one. He took fifteen wounds off the the land raider, so I had one wound left. I was like, ah, oh, dear me. So I took old school. Um, so that was a bit gutted about that. But then his turn one. He gated it, gate of infinity yeah, it. Like the, the jump kind of thing. The jump, yeah. yeah. So he, he sort of put that right in the middle of my lines to try and cause maximum damage to all my, my sort of guard squads. Um, but he left his character and the 10 dudes inside. So my next turn, I then wrapped around the, the land raider with loads of little guardsmen and then took the last wound off with a basilisk. So everything inside died, which kind of turned it from what, what might have been a close game or a low scoring game for me into a, quite a big win. Um, but he was a really, really good player, played ab absolutely everything right, um, got a bit unlucky with dice from time to time. And that, and that one mistake, I think, just cost him probably about 10 points in the game. So, so a big win for me. Yeah, like a big ask for a pure grey knight player against a good... One, one question that I think the guys will be interested in, uh, you've become a bit sort of known for being a trademark chaos player how come you've bought the uh imperial guard and blood angels to this one because chaos are dead um the basically the with the new space mean stuff um i mean chaos lists essentially i mean the build that i was running it relied on plague bearers to not die and then characters behind it to smite and cause the damage um which is great because there's not a lot of things in the game that kill plague bearers reliably but the new Space Marine stuff, which is going to be everywhere, um, they, they just go through play barriers too easily. So 
unfortunately that chaos list just isn't going to work. Uh, oh. Fucking, uh, Maximum havoc. Nick's drunk already, trashing the place. <laughs> uh, but yeah, interesting insight there, Mike. Yeah, so. yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I might be proved wrong. I think I don't think chaos is completely dead, but that particular build that I was enjoying, it's it's really going to struggle. So I might have to have a little look at a few other builds first. Um, so yeah. <laughs> My play bearers. Uh, thanks, Mike. Anyway, and um, I'm sure we've not seen the last of you. Hopefully, get you on stream later. Yeah, mate. Yeah, be great. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. All right. Thanks. Back to. Uh, Oh, Mikey's told me to stall and talk a bit longer. So let's tell me tell me about some interesting lists you've seen at the tournament. Well, I, yeah. So my my top tip for the for the tournament would have been some a list that can score really really highly. So Gene Steeler Colts are going to be right up there. The new Space Marine things. I'm I'm not entirely sure they can get late thirties, forties every single game. So I. I think they'll be up there, but I don't think they're going to actually win the event. Oh, because it's a five-round event. It's a five-round event. I mean, you, you've got to be getting 39, 40, you know, most rounds. And I'm not so sure the Space Marine lists can do it. So I, I would fancy something like um, a, like a Gene Steeler cult list or a, a Horde kind of list that can just take the board, can still kill, kill more, and get those maximum points. Um, and then you've, you've obviously got the players as well, haven't you? So the usual suspects will be up there, but it's going to be really, really tough to win it. Yeah, it's an interesting point because uh, you're sort of average mortal players. We'd obviously be sort of really, you know, we, we'd just be thinking how, what can we bring that will win as much as possible? But if you're, if you're tooling to win the event, you need to be thinking I need to be winning and getting max points because exactly, yes. of that five round format. Yeah, I mean, my, my big worry in my list was it's going gonna, it's gonna to bleed kill points. But because it'll get so many points, it, it's it, it's a little bit of um, a, a bit of give and take really because you have to be getting those those big scores. So you need the squads to take the board to get the objectives, to get the bonus point. Um, so it's I, I'm going to have quite a few close games, but they should be in the 30s close games rather than 20s close games because that's when it's mm -hmm. um, you, you're not going to be anywhere near if you're only getting 20s. So yeah. Oh, thanks, Mike. Uh, I'll see if we're ready to take you back to the stream. Are you lot ready? See you later. Thank you very much, Tan, for that awesome extended uh, update. What happened was the one and only Nick Nanavati decided to kick a wire, pull cameras out everywhere, so I had to quickly fix it while Tank was talking. <laughs> so he's apologised. I've told him off. So there we go. So we are live at the London 40k Grand Tournament. This is table one. Well, our table one. It's not actually table one because there's no table one currently. This yeah. is Boris Michev of the Badminton Cafe and Jordan with the Eldar. Yep, Jordan. Got to Toby's here. Hello, Hi, Toby. everybody. Right. Hello. Uh, do you want to quickly tell us, give us like a quick rundown of how this game has gone? Yeah, for sure. So um, the points haven't updated just yet. They are updated on the uh, on the app. Um, okay. So not until I show why that's not showing on your screen. Um, it's currently about twenty-one to ten um, for Boris in Boris's favour in Boris's turn four. Right. Um, it's a bit of a foregone conclusion now, unfortunately. I mean, you can see from from what you guys can see on the on the screen anyway. Uh, in the top right-hand corner, the Orcs have gobbled up the remaining Eldar there. Mm -hmm. uh, in the top left of your screen, it looks like there's an Eldar flyer that has just been removed. And then yeah. as, as, aside from that, it's just some uh, Storm Guardians left for Jordan Clifford uh, from Leeds Battle Bunker. Um, nice. It, I, d I mean, Jordan, Jordan insists that if he went first, he would have won that game, Mikey. Yeah, insists. Um, I mean, that's a, big, that's a bold statement. Um, I don't know how, how much truth there is in that, um, but Boris went first. The souped-up shocker didn't really do very well turn one, okay. um, and the smasher guns also had an absolute whiffer, so he only managed to take off two uh, Dark Eldar planes in turn one, right, which okay. ordinarily would be a bad turn, because uh, they're, they're notoriously pretty squishy, and yeah. also really good against dealing with flyers. Um, Especially and, the tractor cannons. Kind exactly. Of kind of and the, the souped-up shocker, you almost expect that to kill flyers. Um, yeah. Although the issue... The issue that Jordan then had is that when he hit back, he didn't really do very well. Yeah. He was able to vec that um, grot shield on the looters, which killed, managed to allow him to kill the looters in turn one, which was a great place to be in. Yeah, but obviously really strong. deviated his attention and took a lot of his shots away from the, the mech guns. And you can see on the screen now from Boris's point of view, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mech guns still left. Yeah. Everyone knows how deadly they are. Ten. Just to update you guys on the, the mech gun situation in, in regards to the grots, um, I heard there was a discussion on, on the stream earlier about a placement of the grots. Yeah, so what, when I, <laughs> what I decided, well, not I decided, what I, put, what I realized when I went over is yeah. because the grots are so small, yeah. you can't actually see them on camera. Yeah. That's it. So <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not, not the case. Um, so Bor Boris and Jordan spoke, um, and Boris said, look, I'm going to set my, my mech guns up on this hill. I have space for the grots. If you want me to put them down, I will put them down. There they don't count as towards line of sight, um, and they also don't count for distance. Uh, and then John said, look, if you've got the space, don't worry about putting the models there because I know that they don't mean anything. 
Yeah, um, so Boris does have the right models, does play by the rules. Don't think he doesn't. <laughs> but John just said, as a gentleman's agreement, he'll allow him not to put them there. Yeah, and Tom's done the same. Tom has loads of space because Tom doesn't have his grots on either. Yeah, so. it's just a weird thing that, that alt players don't want to do. Uh, Hobo J says they do count towards line sight for Jordan. I, I mean, J Jordan was able to see all the mech guns anyway. Yeah, they're um, just on a hill. This is the way it is, doesn't yeah. make a difference. No. So, stop moaning, Jay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So that's table one. How's everyone been this morning, Mikey? Is everyone enjoying the stream? I believe everyone's having a great time. Great stuff. I think everyone's having a great time. I'm having a great time. You're having a great time? I'm having a great time. I mean, this is only game one. It's an absolute marathon for us again today. Yeah, it's another um, 12 hours of 40k. Yeah, we have game one of the London Grand Tournament, then we game two, then game three, and then tonight we have the London Grand Tournament Invitational Final, Mikey. Yes, between Joshua Death and Conrad Bart Yes. With his Did you know that's his flies. real name? Joshua Death. He's got. His, yeah, yeah we, we won't say what it is. Family are called in case they don't want to be named, but they also yeah. have great names. Yeah, they do. Super cool names. Hey, people make me do it. I'm only making sure. So there you go. I'm being called back to the table, um, but I will stay here resolute and help you guys with this stream. Yeah. It's all right. We can sub. We can sub Elliot back in. Okay, cool. I'll tag yeah. Team Elliot and uh, tag. I'll get back to the table. Make sure you do a big high five. Woo! Hope that came through the microphone. <laughs> so what we'll do? We're going to have a look a quick look at table two. Go and see what happens on table two. This is Tom versus Lewis. It's 23-12 at this point, going into round five. Hello huge... everyone, I've returned. Hello Elliot, are you okay? Yes, uh, I, I, on the road. Uh, on the road again. Maybe hasn't sat the best with me. No. That's as much information as I'm going to give it this time. Fantastic. So, so there but you I'm go. I'm back now. I'm back, back in the saddle. It's I've quite a sip of the monster forward slash battery acid. Yeah. And I'm ready to rock. Tom and is leading the points with Lewis and then on the other table... Boris is also leading away with the point. So I think we can do, actively say, the Wolf King, thank you very much for follow. We can actively say that both alt players have won this game. So there we go. Someone's called the Wolf King, but it's not you. The Wolf King 87. It's not you, Tank. Challenging Tank. Younger one. The Younger <laughs> King. It's the Younger Wolf, wolf King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Wolf Pup. Ask him yeah. what his ranking is in the ITC. <laughs> <laughs> the Wolf King, what is your ranking in the ITC for Space Wolves? Let me know. If it, what if he's number one? <laughs> Unless he's American. Yeah, number one Tank American. will be asking to meet up with him for tips and tricks. <laughs> Do coaching sessions together. Danny, are you okay now, mate? I'll wear my short shorts <laughs> if you teach me how to use space walls. And... <laughs> <laughs> We've not seen the silkies I'll on camera yet. Whatever you want on stream. <laughs> uh, well, all I'll say is uh, Dan was doing a dance, so we had to give him a break. <laughs> Hobo Jay described at tier one for two months, currently on a one month streak with a whoop. Thank you very much, Jay. Appreciate the sub, dude. Perfect. So, Tank's going to do a little uh, catch up of everyone. Uh, what? He's going to go. To finish? Yeah, he's going to go for a round up. See, there was a few close games that he was keeping his eye on. Yeah. He's going to go and see how those games have panned he's out now and hopefully be able to bring us an update. Sub for the abuse. Appreciate it, Jay. You're absolute legend. Thank you very much for the support, guys. We are doing all this off our own back. So, um, yeah. We are going to get an update of the score uh, at the end of that battle round, um, or the end of that turn for the um, or Lewis versus Tom. Because you can see Dan's head, Dan's hat. It looks very nice today, doesn't he? Um, other side, mate. <laughs> Uh, he's going to do a full update of the score. So it's currently 29-12. 29-12. So. Custodies are getting smashed by Orcs, as are Eldar Flyers. So there you go. So super, so super. So only Trajan Valoris back on the board. Okay. I think Toby might have stolen my pen, because I don't seem to have a pen anymore on the table. Currently, on the other table, Jordan I'm going to blame who was in my seat. Uh, let's see if we can actually see the points of updated. They have up they have updated. Um, I think my iPad needs to needs better mobile connection. So, so the current score is forty to fifteen. So it is currently round six. So there's not much left left on this table. So yeah. Looks like not two a lot going on. Wrapping solid up now. Two solid wins uh, from the art players by the looks of it. Unless Lewis can pull something out of the bag that's a little bit ridiculous. But. Yeah, so Boris has finished for 10-6. Jordan has won that one. So that is the end. That is the end of that. So does Toby fancy doing an interview? He's gone to look at Age Sigma with these two players. Because I believe Toby has got the best insight of that game. So. Uh, 
So we're going to have a quick chat with Jordan and Boris about that game. Boris of the Bad Moon Cafe with the Bad Moon Orcs wearing the Bad Moon t-shirt sponsoring the Bad Moon stream. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone behind the black line. Uh, you'll be on, don't worry. don't worry. So let's cut to Toby, Boris and Jordan. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. Is this, is this mic on? I don't think, okay, brilliant. So I'm joined here with Jordan uh, and Boris from table one at the LGT round one. Um, Boris, you came out the winner. Um, Jordan, unfortunately, you just, just pipped to the post. Oh, yes. By, the, by, <laughs> by imagine 25 points, so it ended 40 points to Boris, just 15 points for Jordan. Do you guys want to talk me through the game? Not really. <laughs> we'll go to Jordan first. Um, yeah, so l looking at the match, it was a case of whoever goes first wins. Um, I think we Boris was saying that even if he went second, he was going to deep strike the looters, but I would have gotten the advantage of being able to shoot the smasher guns yeah. and, and kill, I think on average, I think I killed six to eight, which would have been enough for my flyers to survive long enough. Um, but it wasn't the case. Um, I think I made a slight misplay because on turn two, if you saw the farce, I only put two flyers in front yeah, of the farce, yeah. which was basically quite easy for orcs to kill, which then opens the farce up which completely ruins my ability to kill anything on mass. Um, yeah, it's like misplay there. I think cause what I was trying to do in deployment was try and hide my flyers from like the mech guns and then try and hide from the looters, which you can't really do because the looters teleport, so it makes no difference where you put your flyers. It's hard to hide eight flyers, as it was surprising. Well, for the most part, you, you managed to do it quite well initially. Um, when I started losing flyers, yeah, when I started losing the flyers, it was like it was easier to do it because there wasn't as many targets yeah. but on the opening turn i was like what i was trying to do was hide them and i thought looking back it's completely pointless yeah. because it, yeah if you hide some of them it does force and you hide angles it does force split fire yeah. a bit so it forces the mech guns to kind of split the yeah. fire a bit but i don't think it would have been enough anyway so i should have just deployed in a certain way so on the second turn on my turn one i move so the flyers move into position to move block everything perfectly. Yeah. But I had to move two flyers across to my right uh, because I couldn't move to move block and that kind of cost me quite a bit. So speaking of turn one, Boris, you actually had a bit of a whiff in turn one. Um, nothing really seemed to be paying off and we only killed two Dark Elder flyers in turn one. After turn one, how did you feel like the game was going to go? Um, yeah, I did get a bit unlucky because the point was to kill all three Jukari flyers yeah. so there's no Vect exactly. to Vect my grudge shield. Game, right? And there was one Razor Wing left on three yeah, wounds. Three or four more. Yeah, so I got pretty unlucky with some of these D6 damages rolling ones and twos but with Orc shooting it's always going to be <laughs> swingy. Know, right? um, so, I, you know, I, uh, I felt pretty good. Killing two flyers a turn is still pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and good. the looters were only ever going to get one round of shooting and if I had gone second out of deep struck them they would have gotten one round so of shooting then, and then vected the vect for the watch shield. yeah, yeah. Um, that's how the matchup goes so then the question is in subsequent rounds can the relic shock attack gun and the tractors and a lot of because I would, if I'd got first turn, the loser would have been on the board. So I'd have got three turn of shooting, just gone. Well, there's nothing else to shoot. Just shoot exactly. the mech guns, and that's massive. Yeah. Um, so um, you know, my list does very well against flyers. Yeah, so I'm not gonna lie. It's yeah, it. it's sort of like <laughs> partly built to counter this flying yeah. um, meta out there. So uh, it's still it's still not like an easy matchup. Um, but yeah, it was pretty favorable, I think, for me. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being on the stream, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you. Thanks, Boris. Thank and best luck in the rest of the event, guys. Thank you. We'll throw it back to Mikey and Elliot at the desk. Ready? Thank you very much to Toby for that update. I'm behind a monitor because Nick kicked the camera earlier. Hello. 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 I'm Mikey. I'm Elliot. And that was Boris versus uh, Jordan with a massive win, 40 to 12. Yep. And then 36, 18, was it, to Tom? Not anymore. Game. You, yeah. ask, you asking me? Yeah. I don't think I was here for the score. It was. He just said it behind our heads. So, 36-12. 36-12. 36-12, there we go. Thank you for that. So that was <laughs> two massive wins for the Orc players on uh, take round one of the London Grand Tournament coverage. Uh, we're going to go take a little break now. We're going to go have some lunch. It's enough from the early morning. Wah! Warhammer. So, Warhammer, yeah. So that early was round, morning Warhammer. That was round one. We are going to be live... Oh, Chris Frozen lost his first game by the looks of it. So make sure you go and uh, check out BCP for all the updated pairings. Um, it's currently half 12. We're going to be live in an hour and a half. Yep. Do round two of the London 40k Grand Tournament. Then we have round three and the Invitational Final before the end of the day. Yeah. So have you had a good time, Elliot? I've had a wonderful time, yeah. yes. I've had a great time. So my name is Lionel Brarian. My name is Drew Carey. 
It's not. That's my other name. I am Adam Startis, or Farrell Sight. <laughs> You've been amazing. We've been Hells on Wargaming, and we'll see you at two. Let's have a quick word from our sponsors. <laughs>